So we keep moving along. Ooh, dropping down a cabo in the sunburned El Dorado. Don't worry, that's a motto. So we keep moving. Want to join one of the biggest Valorant communities in Europe? Here's how. It's simple. On Discord, click add a server, join a server and punch in TGH or follow our invite link. Once inside, you'll be greeted by some questions to cater your experience with us. You can assign yourself different roles to gain access to our various channels, rank or game pings and weekly tournaments. We host weekly Valorant and League of Legends skirmishes where you can win Red Bull thanks to our sponsors and bragging rights over your friends. So why wait any longer? Send your first message today, introduce yourself and get to know our friendly community. Make lifelong friends with the Goose House. Welcome <laughs> back to another week. Just in case you missed any of the pre-screen, we are still winning that TFT game. We'll keep you updated with how that one is going. But we are back. This is not the Pelican Palace. This is not the Peacock Palisade, this is the Goose House. It is Jay Real, it is Snow Spy. You already know it's the Valorant time of the week. It's a Monday, and let's get you through the start of the new week, the new dawn, and we're going to see some new teams taking on some new agents to pick up some wins today. I don't even know, Jay Real, who's playing who at the moment, what maps we're doing. I'm so confused. We were so focused on the TFT. All of us exactly. were literally in the pregame. We were getting hype. You know what? Saying that, while we wait to find out who's playing, maps are probably going to be Haven, Ooh. but how is the TFT game going? The TFT is winning. I need two more Talias <laughs> to get a gold one. I've gone Shereman, if anyone knows what that means. It's my first TFT game of the year. Um, mm. First TFT game for probably like three years, to be honest. So I don't know any of the sets, any of the pieces. <laughs> But I'm winning right now. So TFT players get good. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, man. And I've just had we've just had an insight. It's gonna be Bucky Bucky Taka versus Penguin. Interesting Ooh. matchup. I know Penguin. I've played against them. Penguin's a beast, I'll tell you that is, much. Is I've Penguin played... the one that was was the Rainer last week? The one that you said Yeah. No, Did that kind was kind of like pop up. Well or... that that's half of the players in Goose House, man. Half of them are like, okay. you, one game you see them, they're dropping 30. Next game, they've got two kills on the board and they're, they're flaming their team. Yeah, but no, Penguin, 16, yeah. Penguin, I've seen another one in the customs. Denji, I think, was the last one that was that was the player yes. that could oh, be yeah, hot Denji, or cold yeah. streaking. But Penguin was a beast. I remember playing against okay. this player. Literally every corner I, t I turned, just bam, one tap instantly. It was so difficult to play against them. And on a map like Haven as well, you can really pop off. No, Haven indeed. It's one of those maps where I feel like if you are just a good shooter, if you are just a good player, yeah. you can really dominate. We talk about how Valorant is a big team game, but there are some maps where you can kind of get a little bit more solo carry, and I feel like Haven is that map, right? There's a lot of space, a lot of good angles. Obviously, I was kind of talking about this a little bit ago on a different stream where we were talking about some maps like Ascent are very well known by players, so much so that they know the yeah. angles, they know where to aim, so they basically are just times 10 anytime you play anyone on that map. Haven, exactly the same, especially for those top tier players. So I do think it could be dominated by a couple of really good candidates from each team. Yeah, I, I feel like kind of mirroring that point haven itself is a map that suits towards individual players obviously on defense side it's a three site map you're gonna have to split up someone's gonna be playing alone you have that big heavy anchor if a player like penguin can really pop off they can kind of look to carry this game and an attack it's one of those maps that is very lurk heavy you kind of want to gather that info and these early long peaks can make or break rounds now make or break and it's important to remember that the, the swing and the flow of it, I was kind of talking with Veggie about this earlier, about how important pistols are, right? 
Mm. I think that pistols actually, you know, are underrated. Underrated because the four rounds that you can gain off of winning a pistol and then winning the buy round after are absolutely yeah. essential. Think about how many times you've lost 13-9 or one thirteen nine, 9 and you'll be like, actually, you know what? Those rounds really could change the game. Yeah, back when I think the, the stat that helps kind of quantify this best is when they had uh, Red Bull home ground, I believe, which not Red Bull home ground. I'm trying to remember the tournament. It was 100 Thieves. I remember they played a tournament essentially before franchising came through and they won 100% of their pistol rounds and they stomped. Mm. Someone calculated how many rounds they got off of that. And it was, if you add in like all of the second rounds that they got and then when they won their buy rounds, they essentially got like four, four free rounds out of the game just off of those pistols. Damn. That's a lot of rounds. Like... Yeah. We talk about kind of how, you know, like obviously those four rounds can make a lot, but also you've got to think about the clutches as well. I will say like pistol underrated in general. I think if you're good on pistols, if you're good on low mm. economy, it really can change the game. And I think that also one thing I want to see from some of the teams, because I think last week we maybe saw it a little bit too much, is if you are on the buy round, you know the enemy team are on the save round, just play it smart. You know, you don't yeah. need to run into them, you don't need to give them any sort of ground. And I feel like Haven is another example of that, where people will play more aggressive on those save rounds. They may do some really weird stuff, some lurky stuff, some ratty stuff, that can catch you out very easily. And on this map that is so open, so expansive, you really can get caught blindsided. And I think on this map, you especially... You said it yourself, you expect to have a few more of those aggressive plays. People are going to be a bit more cheeky. They're going to try to catch you off guard. One common thing that we see in pretty much every goose house is if you hear noise towards one of the sites, the player playing on the other site is instantly going to walk behind and try to flank you. Because these players, they all want that glory. They all want to be the person that gets that ace. And, like, who doesn't want to be? You know, like, who... Who, who is sitting there like, oh, yeah, I, I don't want this ace, you know? Like, that, that's not me. That's not me. Like, who is that? Well, we'll have to find out at some point. But right now, we're going to go into this game. Round has started. Obviously, Team Penguin are going to be on the attack here. Playing a default off a of pistol. A little interesting here. I feel like normally we see a five-stack push onto one side. And not opting at the moment to go for the kind of find the killjoy UT, util mini game. It's what most pro teams do. They'll they'll pretty much find where Killjoy's playing, break the turret, break the alarm bot, and then look to reset off of that. And they have managed to take out one of the mollies, which is going to draw members over, actually, and make A the weak side. Oh, Voki Voki, they don't know what to do at the moment. They're a bit stuck. They're a bit lost. They're a bit confused. But to be honest, Team Penguin, they haven't made the play yet. They are starting to stack now, starting to move over. Obviously, we do see the luck in mid as well, so they've got to be careful of that one around B. But they are going to slowly peek this one out. Not getting onto the side just yet, though. And I think the smoke's going down. Should it signal that it's go time. Sova dart over the wall. Going to land. We'll see them back sight. And can they press off of this? Now the U2 is starting to come through. Apoc picking up an early one. But Penguin on site getting two. And now going to give his team a bit of space to try and plant this bomb. And not what you expect to see. Penguin coming through. Getting three already. Breach really popping off. Shout out the initiator players out there. And now it's a one versus two from Sharing Lee. Remaining. Finds the first one and low HP could be the make or break for them. Ooh. Will he find him? He does, he knows. Sharing Lee is aware Technoblade is gonna go down. Clutch picked up and Team Penguin with a decently slow start to that round managed to secure the bag. And this is, I think, What's quite interesting for me is normally in these weeklies, obviously, if people aren't aware already and you're just joining us as the first weekly you're watching, normally these teams will be named after the captains and the captains will be the highest ranked player on the team. And those are the players that we normally see playing Jet, playing Rain and stuff like that. Penguin opting into playing that more supportive role, playing for that utility, maybe bringing a little bit of that IGLing presence as well, possibly. And it really comes through there. Oh. Back onto round two. I wonder how they're going to play this, right? They got the buy now. They were very slow, very defaulty, kind of very mm. calculated in their first round. Let's see if it's the same. Although it looks like they're going to be way more aggressive. Shoot out in mid. And it is going to be Boki Boki that picks up that first one. But it's a crossfire in garage. Apox able to get a trade through themselves. Going to be a bit sneaky. Pushing out a garage there. Gives them all the info they need to see that this is going to be a C hit. But with that superior weaponry... It should be going this way of Team Penguin. It should do, 
But you, we talked about this. We talked about the thrifties. We talked about having those upset rounds and how important they really can be to the later stage of the game. And we'll see if they can get onto site. Obviously a tough ask now trying to get the retake with the lesser guns, but it could happen. Straight on site they go, but Penguin stepping up getting two kills immediately. Apoc gonna creep up here, get a freebie from Crack Enjoyer. Very much showcasing their namesake as sharing Lee. Picks up an easy two, but it's gonna be three dead. Gonna weaken that by a little bit for this third round. Three dead does give it, it gives Boki Boki a decent chance now, but this is I feel like the important round here, right? Obviously on the bonus. Can the side of Penguin really pick up another round, build their momentum? Because, you know, maybe they go for a play B. Maybe they go for a little bit of a closer range angle rather than going down long sides like A and C. Or maybe we see them try and play around that rotation once again. Force Bucky Bucky to kind of move around, maybe spread them out a little bit too thin and then attack a site as far. Well. I wouldn't be surprised to see a pace change here. And as I say that, an instant rush down short could be the death of Yao Ming. But no, they're so patient. And it's, it's interesting how kind of tempered they are. Soki now creeping up, but will they push this smoke? Surely they don't go all the way through. Drone maybe going to force them to turn their head, but Yao Ming just staying very focused. That smoke is going to disappear anytime soon. And the gunfight ensues. It's going to be Yao Ming that has the advantage. Soki going to go down first. Blood has been drawn, but Team Penguin... They're already on the move to another site. They're trying to run this Team Penguin squad around the map, and it is working. But as that dog clears short, should give them a bit of information as the B hit is going to come through, and it's only one player on site. Kill comes through there. Apoc alone having to anchor that site, but Penguin is here. Penguin trying to find the kills, not able to get anything through, and Bangers, the lone member, left alive. Maybe we're going to be able to do a bit of economy damage, but we're not expecting too much in terms of winning this round. Economy damage always going to be pretty lethal, though. They do have the Marshall one shot. We'll take out a couple of members. If they get headshot, could be all of the members. Well, let's see what they can really make work here. It does feel like they are not necessarily going to get too much more. Yumming almost getting traded there, but staying strong, staying solid. And another win. Oh, sorry, the first win for Boki Boki there, getting them on the map. They stay strong, only losing two members as well. So keeping their economy pretty good. An expected win round, one round there from them. It was the full buy versus just some frenzies. Pretty much the garage sale or garage sale. What Am I American now? Garage sale <laughs> coming through on the buy from Team Penguin. So now we do see those rifles in full effect. And this should be where the game officially comes to a start. And how will this change the pacing? That's kind of the question that I have because we've seen how Team Penguin have been very slow, been very calculated. Do we now see a bit more of a change of pace, a bit faster with all the rifles in hand? Dog, they're going to be coming out from Boki Boki to clear down a main. And now take a bit of space, but Soki has crept up and Yao Ming not going to find them. A lurking jet gets the first blood. And it's given them control of lobby as well. Still two stacked towards A. Some very interesting setups here from Team Boki Boki. They're, they're just leaving C site completely open, gambling a little bit towards Garage. And I, I honestly do like it because on Haven, it is a map where you need to take these risks. But Team Penguin analyzes the situation perfectly, finds themselves on site for free. On the two site, they go. Crash away. Can get that plant down? Bangers. Able to remove Apoc from a pushed up position. As now, Technoblade also going to meet the same fate. And a, a nice aggressive play from Bangers there. You get the spike down. You get some space around the site as well. Mm. Don't allow Boki Boki anywhere near the plant. And therefore just slowing down any chance they have of retaking. Because now look how deep they are. And this plant is ticking. The spike is going to explode pretty soon. And they have to start making movements quickly. They're going to get one though. Sharingly removed both. Coming out of garage. And Soki hasn't been told yet. They need to turn around. But I don't know if they're going to go for the play here. Looks like they might just save those rifles. It's difficult. Two versus three, not enough time. They're not going to be able to do anything. Maybe, maybe looking for a couple of exit frags here as they're going to take this fight long. And these rifles are so important to keep online. And they do their quick two. <laughs> not going to make it a third. And we'll have to see how this affects the economy. Yeah, and a quick, a quick side note. 
Uh, as we do, we go into round four. The TFT game is over. I came fourth. I got 47 RR for that, or, or LP. And, yeah. uh, shout out, you shout win? Out. So, uh, no, I came fourth. Came fourth. Okay. No, okay. So, some man just a little bit too, too, too with the play. Obviously, uh, trying to cast some Valorant and uh, play TFT. Not, not necessarily the best for climbing the ranks, but, uh, you know, we, we'll take it. But back into this game, who is going to climb their way to the final? That is the question the people at home are asking. And Boki Boki are kind of asking for a solution to Team Penguin so far. And obviously, Haven, a very, very notorious attack-sided map. But what is the strategy to holding this a little bit longer? As obviously, this one is a bit more of a save round for the side of Boki. The thing is, the past three, four rounds have been pretty much the same. Pressure towards A, look for a single pick, and then just look to rotate, but it doesn't look like they're going to rotate on this one. The ult used, the dash in, the kills are already coming through. Oh, Fire was doing exactly that, what their name is saying, but they are going to get taken down for one. And Boki Boki now trying to get onto the side, does get a kill onto Soka. Soki, sorry. Sharing me now, able to get the plant down. We do see Orbital Strike landing onto site as well. They're trying to trying to move them around, but so far not able to really get a hold. As we are going to see the lockdown potentially going to push them off of site. Two versus two, though holding the doors, but Penguin is going to go down. They tried to have an aggressive hold on it, but it wasn't going to be. Two now on site. One can defuse, one can hold. It's going to be able to hold, but in this moment they oh. get bangers. And it's a really nice retake from Boki Boki. A two versus four to even that one up to two, three. And that was so close. That could have went the way of Team Penguin. The timing through the smoke, almost there. But this entry onto site, so, so good. But then on the retake... You look on the flip side, Apoc coming up huge, getting a couple of kills. Lockdown was able to come through, get themselves back onto site. And as we take a bit of scope of this game, I feel like Team Penguin are going to start to realise that C has been a major weak point because A is always triple stacked. And now it's stacked with an op as well. So <laughs> they're really doubling down on this A site. You know, they're, they're like, woo, so key over the wall, doesn't care about your operator. Just sends it straight in and the follow-up of the team is here. They want to slam it through into A, find these kills. Penguin, the entry breach, making it happen, finding two. Two killed, plus the kill on the off. Really strong look for Penguin. Now, obviously, Boki Boki made it happen in the last round. But 2v5, a little bit more stacked against them. And we'll see how they decide to play this one. It looks like they're either making some cracked plan or they're just... Holding for exit frags. And you ever seen a breach run onto site first? That, that's a first for me, to be honest. That Penguin went a bit mental in that round. I can't tell if the other team were just a little bit slow or if Penguin was like really fast. Because like <laughs> yeah. breach util slows you down a lot. Like it, it takes time once you've used it to get on site. So I don't know if maybe the rest of Team Penguin were kind of just like, no, we're just going to wait. just going to wait this one out. But uh, right now, they are going to be trying to leave, and they are going to be yes. met by a bot. One kill, two kills, a couple rifles down. That will be nice for the economy, and no way, no way does this what? happen. Surely no one dies through this wall. I didn't even know you could shoot through that. Well, now you know, j -Real. <laughs> Keep that in mind, everyone watching. Ping that into your comp games. Get yourself an Odin. Spam through that wall into lobby. I mean, it's a bit... I feel like it's kind of contextual, because very rarely are you going to be that far up mid, but... Losing that rifle from Apoc, Bok, I think, is so much worse for Boki Boki. Yes, you get two kills, but Team Penguin's economy already so strong, whereas yours is, is still at such a weak point that they now have to go into a half fight. Now, we, we've got to talk about it, right? We can see it. We can all see it. We're all aware. Attack Operator. But not only Attack Operator. Attack Operator on the Sova. Can I get an early kill? Maybe I'm going to become a believer. No. Oh, I thought he was going to take that shot. I was like, no way. No way. Crosshair was lined up, but it ain't so for this one. And three members rotate over to C from Boki Boki and Team Penguin are all too aware of it as they move back. The, the operator, the shotgun, the shorty. Oh, <laughs> it's chaos, but it is going to go the way of Sharing Lee. Yo, it, is, sharing him, is Sharing Lee that guy? Like, is it him? You know? yeah, with, with the op on so the, I the mean... Sova operator like is this the new strats that we're gonna see like he's got this one lined up down long gonna be Ooh. finally taken down by Boki Boki though 
A cracked player indeed, but now holding sight as the rest of the team are starting to walk on. Team Penguin lurking around CCT. Going to walk into B though. Crack and Joy and Moon walking onto site, almost getting caught by fire. But now able to stay alive, getting the angles. Going to get caught though, and one, one deed in the face. But so going to meet similar fates, and it's another kill. Fire is turning up the heat, and a thrifty for Boki Boki is secured. And Boki Boki there just picking off multiple members, pivotal towards that round. Sharingly came in nice, got those opening picks. But Boki Boki first, killing off Penguin. We spoke about them, they're having such a strong game, they're that star player at the moment. And if you can make these big impact frags happen, you're going to go a long way towards winning yourself some rounds. Yeah, and you know what? I was almost a believer of the, uh, the attack off Sofa. No, 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 I don't want to see it, you know. Uh, uh, maybe don't, maybe don't, you know. Maybe, maybe on defense, the ops over could be could be popping, but... Oh, talking about popping, Sharing Lee already getting a first kill there as they take Garage swiftly, just running towards Seaside now. They'll be able to get on there with no difficulties. Boki going to be forced out of CT as well, and it's going to be a retake needed for Team Boki because the plan is already down. Plant down, Seekers are going to come through, Util spam is starting to happen, it's World War 3 out here, but Boki Boki gets two on the flank. Boki is popping off this game, Yao Ming gets one, not going to look left though, needs to be careful, Boki Boki with the trade though, and now it's a 1v1, two captains, and Penguin is going to leave himself standing, 5-3, another round secured, but Boki Boki are putting up a very strong fight. And just like the rock that their team needed, Penguin comes through in the end. That very much could have been just... Oh, that spray transfer is insane. But not able to find much more after that. Ends up in a one versus one. Goes the way of Penguin. That player that we spoke about so consistently. But we've noticed that Team Penguin have spotted that C is a weak point. This killed your utils so situated towards Garage. You can send yourselves up long, get yourself an easy sight, and it's just the post plan that they need to play that bit better. Oh. Bucky, Bucky. Popping off. Every single round. I see. Crack kills. Talking about crack kills. Crack and Joy there picking up one more as well. Sharing Lee. Not sparingly with his kills either. We're going to see if they can get some more on B, but... The demon, the nightmare, Boki Boki is now on B. Got to be careful where you rotate to. Sharing though, going to use the owl to get a little bit of uh, a little bit of vision and a bit of control around garage. Going to spot out the chicken, but uh, no one else actually in there. And key ultimates are still online. We've still got that lockdown available for the retake. But on the flip side, that's overall going to be able to hunt them down, play for the bomb. Also. A lot of breach utility still there. And Sharingly just wasting their time. Oh, and more than that though. Getting two kills. Killing off Boki Boki as well. And they're all on B. Another kill for Sharingly. Darcy pick it up. Oh, had to reload. Unfortunate. But put his team in a great situation here. Gets three kills. Leaves only fire alive in a 1v3. The plant has gone down as well. And they're all playing long. It's going to be a tough one to retake. Although I will say, I don't know how I feel about this plant. Because I'm pretty sure that's not planted for long. No, not planted for long. But I think they just realised that it's going to be a save from fire. They had enough utility there. They could have used that omen TP the in the shadows to maybe scout it out if it was going to go to that ninja defuse kind of situation but six rounds now for team penguin and it is a close match these rounds are just won by one kill here or there and right now sharingly and penguin kind of carrying their team on their back and on the flip side boki boki pretty much every round they're, they're able to at least get one or two the name is just making me think tacky tacky you know that, that's that's what i'm hearing <laughs> every time we say boki boki like that's that i'm just like boki 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 Rumba, you know, like that. That's what I'm expecting. <laughs> yeah. You know, like <laughs> play the tunes, Dex. Play the tunes. People, they got people need bit, to know. A little bit of salsa going on the game as well. Yeah. Just, <laughs> <laughs> Boki Boki is he dancing hey, yo, on Hey, cracking door was moonwalking on B site. Anything could happen. Who knows? But right now, Boki Boki going to take his hold into you garage. Sure the rest of the team from Penguin have just gone straight on oh, to C. They've taken it by force. 
but they are going to be forcing some corners there. An orbital strike maybe a little bit early there. Plant wasn't going Fight down, planted. but they have split up the team considerably. They're talking a very good position, but APOC knows too much. Angles have been calculated, and right now, Technoblade looking for those kills. Not going to get anything with the Hunter's Fury, but it's going to get space for the team to get onto site. And they've pushed them all back to long. Is planted for them, but they're going to have to spam this one through. The counter on the hunt can happen. They're going to use it. But can they really get any kills off of it? It's still a three versus three, and there's still time on the board. Bokey Bokey taking another kill. Now we see the blind coming through. It's going to be a little bit effective. 40 HP left on the sky. Kills from Kraken Joya. Just finding the four k. Wait, what? Where, where are you going? <laughs> it's a celebratory <laughs> death, you know. They don't need the money. They're rich. They're literally out here. Look, you, you head into the shop. Your team penguin. They've got their four hundred one k set up. They've got all their insurance. Like they've they've paid out. They've rolled up in the Bugatti. Meanwhile, Bucky Bucky's rocking up with Monopoly money, being like, "Please, please, can we have something?" Because the economy difference is so massive right now. Man was just like. I, I can, it, it's faster for me to die than just to save my gun. Like, I, I don't know what the strats were there, but Crack Enjoyer getting a huge round there. And right now, Spray and Prey is the name of this what? round. What? Six. Wait, what? I thought they were on the same team the way they didn't shoot each other. I think they thought they were on the same team too, j Real. It's chaos in mid, and it is going to end up the way of Team Penguin. Fire left alone. We did see them clutch out around earlier, but it's not going to be so this time. It's what did eight I just rounds. Watch? <laughs> Wait, can we replay? <laughs> Text, replay that one. Please give us some of it back. Jay, replay that one for us. What, what just happened? <laughs> what is this? Okay, everyone goes out of garage, and they just wore it in B. But what was that? How did they even get there? Like, I think they, they ran side by side for about 10 steps just next to each other, just hugging. And then, and then it's, as soon as the flash drops, they just realise, they're like, oh god. It's almost like the Valorant equivalent of a Wild West shootout. Both players full flashed, and as soon as the flash drops, you just got a quick draw. Alright, if anyone is planning to make highlight reel like that, if you're going to do this, you need to play the Western music. What a, what a, <laughs> as that bit goes down. So, either way, talking about goes down straight onto site. APOC is going to clear up Soki, and uh, none of the rest of the team were there. They've gone to A, and Bagger's going to pick up the kill onto Yao Ming. <laughs> a little bit of a different style of push there, trying to really sell the fake with the jet going down as well. But Fire going to find the KJ on site, going to get the quick peek and the kill, and that is bombed down. A site could be a little bit treacherous, as right now Boki Boki, they want to go 8-4, they don't want to be going 9-3. They don't believe in the curse. But they do believe in themselves right here. Two versus four. Spike is on site, but Krakenjoy does have into the void. So could definitely steal that one away and go for a different plant. And I think they want to try find a pick here first. APOC, you look at your minimap so smart with it, just staying towards C, being that anchor. Seems like maybe it's a bit of a bait and switch. Make some noise towards A. Expect the rotates, but Boki Boki, are, they're holding strong. They want they, they want to be, make this cheeky play. They, this team Penguins is, is really trying to make it. They are going to get caught out. Fire, Technoblade, just one step ahead. Going to get that pick up. And it's going to be 8-4 on the door to close out the first half. So, swapping sides. What a half we had tonight. Absolute insane plays. Yeah, we see some of these replays come through. I mean, from that round, APOC went huge. Able to get that first opening pick. And... I think Bangers was maybe just a bit too early. Right idea on the rotate, but was left on site all alone. And as we go into this second half, I think we have to take scope of, of kind of how this game's gone. Boki Boki, we'll have to see if they had the same impact on attack. Because obviously Killjoy, a very yeah. naturally defensive agent, not going to have that same ability to pop off on the attack. Now, well, well, <laughs> well, Snow is why you say that. But we, we practice cast of the game. I can't remember the team. But there was a kill. It was EG. It was just, yeah, just entry fragging on loads. Oh, damn, Soki. Okay, picking up the first kill. Yeah, so you never know. It can happen. KJs can be entry fraggers if they want. But right now, it doesn't look like they're going to go for the lurk. Boki Boki looking to go through to Garage. Rest of the team were up A. But no one pushing through after that first kill. Taking and it a little no bit slower. And they have no utility in Garage right now from Team Penguin. Boki Boki just being that little bit cheeky as Soki. Able to get a kill there. 
five versus three and Team Boki Boki just getting picked off one by one right now. And I, re I really want to see where this other KJ is looking. Boki Boki able to sneak past. But now going to be getting the first kill onto Penguin. Can they get more though? They know that they're there. Going to leave it through Garage. Able to get away. But where are the rest of the team going? We see the rotations coming out from the side of Team Penguin. And it looks like Boki Boki should be able to creep themselves onto A here. Going to start to move forward. The Heaven Smoke is there. Initial utility comes out. And I love this from Team Penguin. The patience to be like, let's regroup. We play this retake with our numbers advantage. Oh, Boki man. Stepping up. Another kill. We talked about the entry frag potential. Okay, for a second I thought they were in the same on different teams. <laughs> right now sharing Lee and Crack and Joy in heaven. Bangers is finally going to get the kill on to the other kill, Joy. Line oh, up, no. line up. We love it. We love a line up. Let's go. But can they get there to keep the safety of the plant? Ooh, lovely headshot onto Bangers. Gets the kill. Hey, Pog, can you get one more? Crack and Joy are very low, but so is April. But they have to go for the defuse here. It's all or nothing. Looking at it, gonna get the tap. Does he peek in? He does. He gets the kill and Apoc with the lineup and the 3k. Absolutely massive clutch. Rename to Larry right now because lineup Larry really coming through right there. Apoc with that one. And I feel like the sacrifice. Maybe a little bit too much there. I get what they're trying to do. They want to half the bomb in the molly, make sure that it's an easy defuse, but you leave it. In a one versus one situation. And APOC was just a little bit better this time. I will say, I, talking about sacrifice, I think Boki Boki, I want to see them you know, play a little bit closer together. I think that they gave away a lot of pieces and then essentially had to go for like a 3v5. Which is a pretty risky strat, especially as we get into those buy rounds later on. Talk about buy rounds. Boki Boki have ball, but so have some of Team Penguin, so bold, they're gonna go for that force, but they are getting absolutely mowed down, four kills straight away, last alive is Soki, with a Marshall and a Dream, but I don't know if they're gonna be able to get five shots in a row. Yeah, I don't know if it's really uh, the kind of dream that you want to be having, it's more like a nightmare out here, as one versus five, not an angle you like to see yourself in often. I, see, I would like to agree that people don't have this dream, but I think solo key players just have this fantasy. They're like, let me lurk so I can get this one versus five. Soki picking it off with a bang, gets one kill straight away, gets the turnaround, gets the second. Okay, two out of five secured. Can they get a third? Molly is secured, but that could be a kill. Apoc, though, pulls out the gun, and Soki stopped in their traps. Will it go for the knife or something there? The, the dash in to... Oh, my, 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 my Maybe they, 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 just... I didn't read the patch notes. Maybe they started to put that buff in, you know, the jet stun. Right? Yeah. Just goes for the flying headbutt there. Maybe a bit of a misclick. <laughs> it they missed, looks they like... missed there, you know. Like, if, they, if they landed straight Yo. onto Apoc then they would have got the head but, but imagine if you could like anime like you know if the katana where they like just slightly pull it out the sheath and dash through imagine if like they made jet be able to do that like you could do the knife damage with the dash that would be sick yeah right for all intents and purposes please do not do this it will make your game really toxic and everyone will lock jet instantly <laughs> but from a from a from a nice thought process of this will never happen yeah that would be sick but on to this na next round team penguin they did buy some guns in that last round. A few people didn't. Ooh, Ooh. bangers. Almost finding this shot on to Yao Ming, but not going to get the kill here. And Yao Ming able to creep up there. So going to cause some problems for this KJ. The rest of the team, though, hovering around this B site. Maybe go for this short site take because obviously B, a lot closer. Don't need to have the range on a band or anything. No. Playing those close angles, like you say. It's always optimal here, and using this utility to Destroyed. the maximum advantage. They're going to spot that there's no one on B, but they just want to play this a little bit slower. They want to make sure they have all five members alive, and I think oh, it's going to be one creep. of those. Look yeah, they creep up. Oh, but they're above. They're above. Look up. Look up. Look up. Soki, look down. <laughs> one of you, look at, look at vertically. Either of them are both just, just looking too horizontal, you know, too horizontal there. But the site has been taken on to A. Boki Boki, another entry, another secure, and it's going to stop them from coming in through CT. Rest of the team able to mobilize onto A. We have a little bit of flank control as well. So now it's on Team Penguin for the retake. 
Kraken Joy still has this flash. They've still got a bit of utility. But the weaponry. I don't know if it's quite going to be there. Bangers has the Marshal. And APOC. No. No way does he have a lineup from here. Right no. now, though, the rest of the team no is shot. starting to move on to site. So they need to speed up if they are going for a long flank here because the rest of the team are starting to die. We are going to see the orbital strike go to buy a bit more time. Penguin, though, able to get a couple of kills, but Technoblade Blade still strong on site. And APOC now in the exit frag category gets two more. And APOC just has such a good read on this game. And I made a mistake. That that was the bonus from Boki Boki. They, they weren't expected to win that round. That, that yeah. should have been going the way. Of this, the single solo rifle from Boki Boki opens up that round there, and from there it just snowballs into a really nice flank from Apoc. Perfectly timed lurk to to just be able to completely stuff that round. Seven eight now, Boki Boki winning the first three rounds. We talk about the first two rounds; they picked up the bonus as well. So now into well, what should be double rifles, but actually because of the buying situations, I don't believe that Team Penguin have guns, and they're <laughs> just running out mid. <laughs> but this time, it's not going their way. It is going very much Bucky Bucky's, as they are going to be able to pick up three off the bat. The blind is going to get the kill onto Penguin as well. Fire, going to put them down. Knives in the air, but Technoblade don't care. Gets another kill onto Socky, and an easy round for the side of Bucky Bucky. Okay, that's just so sad for Penguin, actually. Uh, only a sheriff in mid and gets a sky dog and two flashes to the face. Like that's just that's just unfair. You're trying to. You're, you, that's where you type in all chat. You're like, fight me evenly, one v one me, bro. Because <laughs> they're just dumping util in your face. But we see now that it's a bit of. I feel like on this defense side, Team Penguin haven't figured out how they want to play yet. They they aren't really aggressing anywhere. They're kind of just spreading out across the map and and hoping that they can get opening kills. They, they also have been, in my opinion, kind of not keeping the economy afloat. You know, like it's uh, it's been a bit of a weird buy situation for them. They forced, then they forced again, then they had pistols. So now actually on rifles, maybe this is going to change. Good duo play there, Soki. Then we have to pick up the kill, saving the likes of the Sova there. It was in the drone. And Boki Boki taken down is a huge pick for Team Penguin. Yeah, massive, but. They've got one raid boss. I feel like APOC is like the second stage of the boss battle. You've dealt with Boki Boki. Now you've got you've got APOC here on this brimstone ready to frag out a moment's notice. Oh, Kraken Joy in smokes. Oh, if Technoblade walks in and gets him when he's in smoke. Oh, this is going to be horrible. Okay, he's back out. He's back out. Ready with the Phantom. See, I'm going to see Dog up mid fire. Scout destroyed. Not going to find too many. We'll see a couple on B, so maybe going to change their pathing here. Smoke's going to come out. On the dark. Okay. They don't know there's one there. Penguin. Trying to lock this one down. Is able to get the first one. Is there going to be more, though? Tremor going to come through. And right now, Team Penguin able to hold this one pretty well. Are going to lose one more, though. Boki Boki. Time is not on their side. 14 seconds. They have to go now or never. Do they save or do they go? That's what they really need to know. It looks like they aren't going to push it. they got five seconds. They need to get the plant down right now. It looks like they're going to just save this one. Maybe take a few rifles off of the side of Team Penguin. But indecision is what really killed them in that round. And I would have loved it even when APOC had the right idea. When they knew they weren't going to be able to win the round anymore. There just wasn't time to get on site. I feel like you go aggressive for kills. Because it's all about that economy battle. Valorant... While it is a good game in and of itself, you're shooting each other, the money is so, so important. And in rounds like that, where a team has just spent all their money to eke out a rifle buy, getting as many kills as you can on them can be so detrimental because this could have been a free round if they were able to get maybe three, four kills rather than just the two that they got. Get out of my so on way. to the next one. Double rifles again. It is good for Buffy Buffy. They had a lot of money, so they are able to get a buy in as well. But this one, I think, is where we're going to start to teeter on the edge of teams not being able to fully buy if they lose a round here. So quite an important one, as we are going to see Team Buffy Buffy playing a little bit more of a normal strat, right? We've seen the KJ on the lurk often, but now we're seeing the two into the garage. Three down C long. As we see Yao Ming try and get a peek, but not going to find anyone. Sovadar into the backside. It's going to be cleared. 
And they're going to find Technoblade back. Sight there, jumping in. Into the smoke, they go. Knives just slightly wide. Soki getting taken down by Yao, taking Yao Ming out. But here comes the cavalry. Bok, Apok, and Boki Boki able to just slaughter members. And now Boki Boki trying to claim even more. Picked up one on a lurk. Two straight out from Apok. It's fire with the quick shot. Goodbye, Penguin. And they're sprinting towards A now. They have no real info on this last member from Team Penguin that's alive, but I don't think it's going to matter too much. Three versus one, set up a crossfire. Bish, left. bash, jo bosh, job should be done. Bot coming back. Yeah. Have you seen the Bosch guy on TikTok? You know, the Bosch? I have no idea what you're on about, mate. I'm, okay, I'm a boomer. <laughs> well, anyway, he just eats a lot of curry, but he just says the bosh. He's like, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like a thing. <laughs> but he just made me think of that. But either way, right now, sharing the gonna get the first pick up there, killing off Boki Boki. But here's the orbital strike. We know there's a lineup as well. Surely yeah. it's coming. He's gonna get the kills here. He's gonna go aggressive, and he is gonna step forward. But fire is waiting. Although gonna get picked up here. Maybe sharing me might have this. Molly is gonna buy a bit of time no though. Time. No time. That's tough. Yeah, well played there's no Sharing time Lee, there. Yeah, Sharing Lee, you know, getting a like, few of those kills there. Nice to take a few weapons off the board, make them buy up again. But Team Penguin, they're going to be in such a rough spot right here because I feel like I, I saw maybe two people could fall by up. The rest of them are maybe going to be on Bulldogs, some Sheriffs. That's, that's a bit How sad from the army. Way? It's, it's actually... One of those where the jet knives don't fire on your crosshair. Like, they actually have a spread. So I feel like when you aim for the head, you can have situations like that where just all the knives miss. Damn. Because I was like, maybe they were just... On the right off, click. But they, they were like yeah. on target. So anyway, it doesn't matter. Oh, going into the next round. 9-9 nine, nine is the score. But this ain't Brooklyn. We're going to see who is going to be able to pick up the win here. Boki Boki. Moving towards A, one aggressive push, but Yao Ming just very far ahead of the rest of the team, gonna get picked up for free. Yao Ming is, is Palmer doing this, Palmer sprinting in, and Boki Boki now gonna use that lockdown to bait some members over. And this could be huge, but steadfast, sharingly just able to use that, Ooh. <laughs> that's overall, to take that lockdown out, and Soki, taken down. Having a great round though, picking up three kills already. Showing me back with the Odin. Will be able to pick up some more kills. Does have, oh no, doesn't have the Hunter Fury anymore. Did use it. They're gonna go up into heaven, cause some problems. Aldro now gonna come out. Fire gonna kill that one off, but gets cool. Ooh, fire with the quick kill. I thought they were dead and gone, but they stepped up. Another kill for them as well. Killing off Penguin. Two times and two. Rounds now. Plant gonna go down, but they have to be careful. Flank coming out from Crack Enjoyer. CT from Bangers. Which one will they peak? Which one will they bind? Fire gonna be caught by Crack Enjoyer. And now they know. One flank, one CT. Good angles, but how will Bucky take it? Gets one kill. Now a 1v1, but Crack Enjoyer gonna pick up the kill. And a save around there for Penguin. Managing to keep them in it and not go any further down. Gonna TP up for the Odin, get a bit of economy, and uh, you know what would have been that would have been crazy if he was like really low and he died. But that would have been the yeah. ultimate yeah. sadness. <laughs> just jumps out of heaven and just just <laughs> breaks their ankles. I honestly would have loved to see that. <laughs> but yeah, this is it's the right I mean. click. It's the what? right click. Yeah, you're right. I, I, your game. You know, you, you ever seen that like CS:GO meme where it's like, well, bullets one to five clearly missed. Five, seven and eight are, are recoil. It's it's one of those where it's like knives <laughs> one to three, one to two hit body. Rest of them just barely missed over the head. It's 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 why I think right click is just ass. Yeah, I, like I don't play loads of yet, but when I do, I never right click the knives. Right click the classic a lot. That's that's OP. Yeah, that's the fact that that's a free gun. I feel like it should maybe cost like fifty creds or something. Make this make someone spend at least a little bit of money. Like if you don't you don't pay your gun tax, you, you just have to go in with a knife. Damn! <laughs> Damn! Ra Rambo out here. Like, you only have a knife. Like oh my days! 
Yeah. No. Bri- your initiator full buys you till only gets a knife. You're a, you're playing Overwatch now. That's you're not allowed to shoot a gun. That would be insane. I know that I, I think it was Jules the content creator. I think he was trying to do like knife to gold or something. Yeah. Like knife only. Which is crazy by the way. I don't know I don't know how they did on that one. But right now we're talking about how they did. It's gonna be an oh, God, execute from Boki Boki, but again, quite an early one from Soki, not really followed up by the rest of the team. Uh, it's not Soki, by uh Yao Ming, but Soki gonna be able to hold it once again. And Soki having a really good defense half, right? We, we've seen them pick up a lot of those first kills. Maybe get two, maybe get three in these rounds. And staying very, very strong, but it feels like they're gonna commit to this A push. They still have members on site. Aldro gonna be used out, but Penguin picking up a kill. Soki picking up another one. And 4k for Soki. Strong round from them. Trying to say, you know what? We may have had a few shaky ones, but Team Penguin looking to close it out. And Yao Ming, I feel like he's kind of on that tilt entry thing. You know, when you're tilted, you're playing comp, you're like, oh, I'm just going to I'm just gonna go. I'm just going to go in and hope mm. the team follows me. Because their timing is, has just been so off when you compare it to the rest of the team. So early compared to any other members. And it means that, not really able to make any space because Team Penguin just, they bring out the fault line, they use the smokes and instantly cut off any follow-up. Yeah, it, it just feels like they need to synergize a little bit better, you know, like just slow it down a little bit. Although saying that, I think maybe the rest of the team are just going to speed up. Yeah, I'm mean, going to dash straight in. Rest of the team are going to be following this time and maybe this is going to change the game. Soki, though, still strong. One, two, can they get three? They do. Oh. And another one for Kraken Joy as well. Left it to be a 1v5. Boki Boki is the man with the sheriff. Play the cowboy music. It's time for a showdown. I don't Down think here get it. in the west. <laughs> the fancy <laughs> shot is going to pick up his first kill. Baki Baki versus the world. This town ain't big enough for the both of us. But <laughs> 45 seconds on the board. Nah. How's the Odin us. now? <laughs> I'm going to keep doing this. Only one of us has got enough time for this saloon. And it ain't going to be me. <laughs> I was about to do I, I was about to do the chew, chew gum and kick ass quote, but then I realized that's Duke <laughs> Nukem. Completely like different genre, but <laughs> yeah. uh, well Bangers cool. Bangers said, yeah. you know what? This is my town. This is my town, little Baki Baki. And that's uh, I'm that's the sheriff in this town, boy. Yeah, I'm the sheriff, boy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, enough of our bad American accents. We're going to go back to uh, normal casting here. So we get the 9-12 in a pretty spectacular fashion. I will say, Soki, shout out on my defense side because they have really been holding these sites down. And you just see it time and time again, just picking up multiple kills, stopping the entry from going down. And Team Penguin, they're one win away from taking themselves to the final. Yeah, did you know that uh, Jet was a defensive character? Uh, I didn't know that no. until this game because Soki has been popping off as soon as we got to this second half. Yeah, Penguin was the entry. Soki, the defensive player. Maybe they switch him onto a Sentinel, you know, in the second uh, second half. If they go to the yeah. final stage. Still three games, though. We could get a uh, an overtime. Boki Boki. Yeah. Slowed it down. And, and I think this is smart, right? We, we've talked about how a lot of their pushes recently, they've just been too fast. You know, they've just been getting caught out, going down early, and it just gives so much momentum to the side of Team Penguin. Slowing it down, getting a bit more time. Getting a bit more space definitely could be in their favor. And they're going to let Boki Boki hunt for these opening picks. See if they can find anything at B. I like this angle from Kraken <laughs> Keeping it really close. The fact that they have to cut round and go past the molly. Oh, but they do just that. Fire going to be able to pick up the kill, but Bangers able to trade one back. So one for one in mid. Now, seeing a and Boki go into Garage, taking a bit of space here. Nice grenade to give them a bit more time. Thirty seconds left. Soki still on C, the one that you have to be watch out, watch out for. Still on fire as well, feeling really confident. Is they're gonna peek into it, and one gets their head ripped clean off, but Apoc able to trade that out and bangers wins a crucial fight which could possibly mark the end of the game here jreal two versus three and they have to win this one now team boki boki they do have the hunter's fury so they have a lot of post plant there's potentially a lineup as well 
They might be able to buy quite a lot of time, but not if they're dead. Hunter Suri gonna come through, take the blade, gonna be able to get one kill onto Bangers, looking for a second, not gonna find it. And now the pressure coming through from Penguin, chases them down, that is going to be the final kills in the match. Get the defuse, maybe die if your teammate kills you, I don't think he's gonna have the damage, and that is gonna be a win for Team Penguin. And it was a close game, all in all. Boki Boki almost turned it around on their attack half, but... Just a few mis-executes. This is really nice here, actually. Playing that anti-flash in mid, expecting the flash through. And at the end of the day, it ends the same way it started, with Penguin just able to find multiple kills with big plays. No, and, and look, there, there were some definite star players. We talked about Haven potentially going down to the big names, the big players, the strong carries. And we did get to see that a lot, right? Boki, Boki, Apoc, Fire really popping off. And then a few on the side of Team Penguin as well. Because Penguin had a really good round. Soki on defense, absolutely phenomenal, man. But like also some really good rounds from people like Crackenjoy as well. Kind of picking up multiple kills. Getting some really powerful wins to give them that advantage, right? It was still a pretty close game. I think it ended up 13-9, right? And... That's just kind of how the cookie crumbles. At the end of the day, if you don't get those big round wins, then you're not going to be able to go through to the finals. But Team Penguin have made it to the next round. Who they will be playing will be found out shortly. We're going to be going to a break very quickly. But uh, but I want to quick, quickly get this one because production haven't told us that we're clear yet. So what's your <laughs> kind of like a, what was your kind of moment or play of the match from this game one? I think for me, it's got to be. I think when Soki on that defensive half found that 4k where they're able to just mm. shut down the attack completely because that was the turnaround point we were saying boki boki were coming back it was i think it was eight nine at that point and then all of a sudden soki finds a 4k completely shuts them out of a and off of that boki boki just never really found momentum again no indeed i think that yeah i want to see if they swap out the comp like, i'm really interested yeah. to see if they maybe like given how good he was on defense maybe Swap Saki onto uh, <laughs> Sentinel. You know, I, I don't know. Like maybe that's what they're thinking. Maybe put Penguin on an entry. Like and maybe that's what they switch up to. Maybe they won't. But either way, we'll find out shortly. We're gonna go for a quick break. We advise that you do as well. But make sure it's short because you don't want to be missing the finals. It's coming up right next after this short break. If we go to break, I don't know if we're actually or not. <laughs> <laughs>
saw the Iron Man chair but is it going to be the next team to come through and avenge the side <laughs> that just lost the penguin that's the question are they going to do it is Bucky Bucky going to get avenged we do not know we'll find out because the finals is up next team penguin taking on a new challenger and I feel like snow team penguin I, I can't decide right I thought they looked very consistent mm -hmm. But then there were also some times where it just felt like they went very off tempo. Like, I think the buys in the first four rounds really kind of threw them off on that defense side. And actually, had they maybe yeah. played a little bit more conservatively, they actually win that 13 7, 13 8, a little bit more consistently. But I think that's one of those where it's just like you get confident. You're like, yeah, this is an easy win. We won our attack side. We stomped it. We're beating them in every gunfight. We're just better. And then you get a bit overzealous. And then the first, like, three, four rounds, it's funny. It's like, ah, oh, guys, you know, we're throwing a little bit. And then 
mm. after that that eighth round came through for the side of Boki Boki, they were like, oh, okay, we need to take this game serious now. And they locked in straight away after that. Yeah, because the switch up came quick, right? Like, they were kind yeah. of goofing, they were losing rounds, they went to 8-8, it was then 9-8, you know, 9-9, mm. problems. And then they just kind of switched back on. And it was 13-9. It didn't seem like they had any real issues in closing out those last four rounds either. Yes, okay, maybe the last round was a little bit close. But apart from that, it felt like it was quite plain sailing for them. And I do wonder if they're maybe even like kind of sitting in third or fourth gear. And they're ready to go to fifth gear now in this final. And actually show that they're even more coordinated, even more dangerous in this next one. And obviously... I do think map is going to play a big role in this one. I think the map yeah. can really make or break whether a team will perform well or not. I think if we get something like a Lotus or a Fracture, it makes it much more difficult for teams to perform. But if we do get something like the Ascent, like the Havens, you know, you know that could be where a team really does shine. Yeah, something like that, especially with how Penguin played in that game. I spoke about it as a kind of throwaway point in that normally in these matches you expect that person that is the team captain they're normally playing the duelist because they are the highest rated player penguin was like nah i'm gonna play util for the team and that util was so effective especially on attack on defense it was a bit more difficult at first they weren't able to find that same rhythm and i expected a lot more aggressive plays especially because of how their attack went but they picked it up in the end and it was off the back of soccer you ended up having a monster second half no, indeed, yeah. Their defense was absolutely crazy. I talked about maybe them, them going on to a Sentinel because of how well they play on defense. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe they switch up, maybe they don't. But I want to get into that, actually. You kind of talked about where you situate your lesser players and your stronger players. It's interesting that you're like, okay, maybe we put our duelist as our strongest player because I personally feel like I subscribe to the opposite in a way of like, if you have someone that's consistent, right, in terms of like just being an entry, able to get in there, get them to sight... I feel like actually it's the role of maybe one of your lesser good players just because yeah. the rest of the team can then go in after. They're not going to get picked off first. There's a little bit less danger in that second entry moment. But also you can flash better. You can smoke better. You have the timings a little bit more down on some of those agents. But I think maybe that would even be the way that I would choose to lock in the team. So I don't know how you feel about that one. I think it's one of those where it's, it's kind of what... If you remember Optic 2021 when they won, uh, mm -hmm. sorry 2022 when they won and they were they were one of the best teams in the world, it was yeah. very much what they did in terms of yay their best player and yes it was the chamber meta was on chamber and Victor who is a very good player in their own right their whole job was you go in and you die for yay you just sprint in yay's gonna trade you out every time you get as much space as you can and that's very much that similar vein of like if you make that second person in something like. I mean, we see it more often now with teams like Fnatic where they have Leo who plays Sova and has some monstrous games where because their utility isn't massively vital, they'll throw the lineup at the start of the round. The shock darts aren't really going to come through unless they maybe need to clear some utility. So they their, their whole aim and their whole purpose after that initial arrow is just fragging out and it can mm. work so well. Yeah, and obviously... I do think it takes a lot of coordination, right? I do think that if you mm. play a little bit out of sync and stuff, then it can cause problems for you. And I think if you are a more coordinated team, which maybe the weeklies are not, you know, playing day after day after day with each other. So maybe this is why the strats actually work better just to have shooters on mobile yeah. carries. I do think there's like a little bit of a level where maybe that's a switch up that some teams decide to utilize, right? Maybe they say, okay, you know, actually, like Penguin has said himself, Maybe we put a bit of util on some of our better players. Maybe we say, okay, you know what? You can entry. We'll kind of follow up and then do the job. But either way, however you want to play, make sure you're signing up to those weeklies. Because I think that's what really matters. It's all about the taking part and obviously yeah. the winning. Uh, but no more the taking part than the winning, right? Right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's 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 part of why I like the custom games in general. The five versus five setting is just so much more enjoyable. You don't have to deal with the random teammates from comp where someone's going to randomly run you down and then call you bad at the game. Instead, you get rammed down by someone you know who also calls you bad at the game, but at least yeah. they're friendly about it. Mm. And for a more reasonable, you know, reason. Yeah. For like a solo queue is a world of telling people they're bad for the wrong reason, <laughs> you know? So, uh, yeah, shout, shout out those mans. Maybe, you know, keep your <laughs> opinions to yourself. But either way, you know, we should be getting into the final. It's Team Shah the Pimple. Shah the Shah, yeah. you know? Yeah. Versus Team Penguin. <laughs> now, we saw Team Penguin slip and slide around like it was ice. 
but we're not going to be... Surely we're not going to Icebox. No, tell me we're not going to Icebox. I don't want to go Icebox. I feel like that is... I've seen so many Icebox games recently, just specifically in these weeklies. I feel like... I don't know if it's when I cast, because I hate that Mm. map. I see Icebox all the time. So it's like the teams are like, yeah, we go to Icebox. But I want to see... <laughs> back online. I, I want to see Icebox. like a I want to see like a Lotus or something I like that. I haven't oh, seen no, Lotus. I Why not? What's, what's your I hatred hate for Lotus? Lotus? I hate Lotus so much. I'd rather see like a Fracture. Like I'd rather see Fracture. And uh, the map is Split. Okay, so we're gonna, not going to get any okay. of that. I, I actually like Split. You know, I think the Split is... Personally, I want to see Bind. Bind is my favourite map at the yeah. moment. Obviously, Ray's main, you know what it is. But Split... Another good map. It's the one for Premier, so maybe teams have been playing it a little yeah. bit more. But I think that it's a cool map where it's got that mixture of people know the map, kind of how they know Ascent and Haven and stuff, but it's yeah. mixed up a little bit more so it's not as well known as previously before. And there's obviously a little bit of a different way that you can play Split. Okay, you know, a few different agents can be switched in, switched out. And we'll have to see. I, what I want to see is mid control. That's that's what I'm really interested about. I feel like Sage, obviously a big answer to a lot of mid-control players. Some people opting out of that Sage meta. Yeah, I hate Sage. I'm going to be vocal about it. I hate mm. Sage. I think it's. I think it's. I don't think it's useless. I just think the way teams use it is not very useful because well, so often what we see on Split with Sage specifically is Sage will just insta wall mid at the start of the round. And it doesn't do anything. Teams just break it. Teams just wait it out. You've essentially wasted 30 seconds of the round for, for not really much else. And then what always happens is you break the Sage Wall, they throw both slows, and you're like, great, we've we've wasted the first 30 seconds of the round and we have an agent that has no util anymore. It's it's one of the reasons why I, I hate the fact that teams don't really switch it up. Like, they don't use that Sage to, to play a bit more for retakes, use that wall to cut off some interesting angles. They just settle into this default of wall mid and run away well we might be getting a sage <laughs> Don't, no, it's, we might be I, getting two sages here guys it's, so, it's it's well known you know like how people have like the agent they hate like everyone hates Rayna. yeah i hate sage i hate i sage. don't know if i hate Rayna. I'm, wait let me think about who i hate who do i hate i think it depends who i'm playing if i'm playing rays i really hate deadlock like that's it's like yeah. the wall going down is so triggering, man. Like it's yeah. just a tilter. But agents that I Select hate, that's agent. a tough one. I feel Speak- like. I mean, you say that though. It's not going to be locked in, but deadlock actually on on split can have yeah, a lot of good effectiveness. Yeah, because there's yeah. there's essentially three main funnels on this map. When you look at it in in the sense of like where deadlock can set up, you can set up garage. You can set up maybe mid. You can possibly set up towards A, although you have to spread your utility a bit more. But you can cut teams off really early and look to... The difference is, with the deadlock wall, if the enemy team commits to breaking it, you just swing them and kill them. This is another part of why I don't like Sage. Enemy team commits to killing it, the only real play you've got is if you're on top of the wall and you swing out. But everybody knows it on split, so you can't really make that play anymore. We'll have to find out. Because I feel like we have one Sage. We have one team yeah. with no Sage, one team with Sage, one team with Arena, I and, believe. And knowing my look, the Sage team is going to win. Just because I've went on about it for so long, we're going to see like the most effective Sage wall. They're not going to be able to ever get through it mid. And then I'm going to have to eat my words. I'm already ready for it, j I'm already angry. I'm already upset. But I am ready for this game. We're going to be some of the most <laughs> like progressive, new inventive walls that you've ever seen. Where you can actually just yeah. peek into spawn, gets a Penta, like, gets an Ace even. I'm playing too much League recently. And, uh, yeah, who knows? Who knows? I- I'm interested to see how they play it, right? Because I-, I do think that Sage can have quite a lot of utility on Split. I think it- it's kind of like a Band-Aid, though. Um, yeah. on... you, know, you know what else? You know what else I hate, Jamie, oh, while we're oh, on he's it? He's on. Yeah, go on. The, uh, you've-, you've locked me in now. And uh, what else I hate is on attack when people do that wall out of garage. Oh, my yeah. gosh. It annoys me so much. Because you- if-, if you look at it in a sense of, what is your aim when you want to take a site? It's not getting the bomb down. It is taking as much space as possible so that the defense has to fight through more of you. If you just get the bomb on site and then just leave, like you're going to lose the round. That Sage Wall is essentially the epitome of we're going to very easily get the bomb down, but we're going to have no space at all because we cut ourselves off from back site. Production, can we get a quick zoom in on the uh, the Crown <laughs> Coffee logo, by the way? I just know, while I was listening to the uh, the... 
the, the rant. The, the rant, yeah. There, so there's a crown, there's crown coffee, I think it's in spawn of uh, a, a attack. That's where we have to go to, if we can go there. Because it, like it looks like it's got like a little moustache, man. Kind of similar to the yeah. Pringles. Right now, they're just saying, no, we're going to yeah, float thing, off into you think, the abyss. You think you can like, make requests out here? We're, yeah. we're floating into the void, J-Real. That's, that's where we're going. I there was a snake, though, on, on, this, on this wall. That's, uh, yeah. that's some stuff. Ooh. Oh, so we're, I don't little... think we're going to get to see it. I don't think we're going to get to see Coffee, Coffee Man. I don't oh, know if we're going to get to see the round. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Where we just, are we? <laughs> we float off into the darkness. We just <laughs> never come back. We watch from a bird's eye view. We just see the scoreboard come up. Just like, oh, yeah, yeah. Good, good kill there. That's a nice one. But talking about what we do see, though, Sage is mid. Can we get a quick check on whether they have walled or not? No, they haven't. Look at your mini-map, J-Real. Oh, it does show on the mini map. Okay, I, I don't, I don't watch spectate. Yeah, here, look, you see the little moustache on the on the crown coffee, you know, right there. But anyway, oh yeah, oh, how do you push up from A, and that's not going to go well. Socky going to be caught out sharp. The pimple leading the team in, and also playing an initiator here. So maybe this is going to be a thing for both teams, as we are going to see quick rotation into hall. Not to haul into a ramp and sharing league, gonna get a quick kill onto Charlie, but the rest of the team is starting to peek round, and it could be big with sharing league with a triple kill, able to hold his ground. Already picks up three, putting them into a three versus two situation. Both these members pinched onto site, but it's that captain, Shah the pimple, looking to pop off here. Man, it's a pocket, it's a pocket advantage, you know. That's that's what you got to remember. And uh, right now, Sheringly going to pick up another kill. 4K Penguin not going to allow him to get the ace, but little man is going to get the defuse. So Sheringly four kills and a defuse. What a round to kick us off. And I feel like that. I don't know if we're going to see a replay of it of when that first fight happened, but it was a bit of that like like Spider Man meme. The Spider Man meme where both of them meet each other outside A main. And yeah. they're both like, wait, you're retaking? No, we're retaking. No, no, you. <laughs> no, neither of them knew what was going on. Okay, we just went past it again. But but did you see the man? Look, he's there as well. You <laughs> yeah, the, the, little, the little mustache man. Yeah, what is that? That's lit. We need more of that. Where's my banner with that? <laughs> yeah, they, they take it away. They're like, no. <laughs> I was just like, we're looking at it now? No. <laughs> Look away. <laughs> you don't get to see it. But we are looking at a buy round from the side of Team Penguin. A few, a few Spectres, a couple Guardians. We'll see how they can make this one work. As play up mid didn't happen. Wall was put down. They've broken it. They managed to go through, but one kill is going to be assured from Penguin. They're now going to have to start backing off a little bit because the firepower from the side of Team Penguin is a little bit too much. And they want to play through mid. They break the wall, but... Team Penguin are able to hold the line. They put three members dedicated towards mid to hold them back. And they're just going to stay here waiting for some rotates, it seems, from, from Charlotte Pimple's side. And and how are you feeling about that wall play, right? They put the wall talk up. talk about it. They, they broke one it. segment, but then they were able to defend the wall. So it was it, was it not a good it. wall? I don't want to talk about it, okay? I'm, I'm <laughs> upset. It's, but it's, the thing is, it, it, it's based on a team's patience and a team's willingness to wait. There's Flo here looking for this pick, but if if you instantly try to push through the wall, you're going to get taken out as Crack Enjoyer shows left. us there why mid control is so important on split. Now creeping. One enemy remaining. Well, I was going to say creeping towards A, but they're already removed. It's just a quick round for Team Penguin. They had full control. They had the buy. They had the guns. And they had the win secured. But can they stop Shah the Pimple when they have Here you go, Jay. Here you go. Yeah. No, but we're just going past it. Go go up. The coffee shop. The coffee shop. Yeah, the coffee shop. We're going but I want to know, like, is this like the Pringles, man? Is that is that like... Oh, it's, it's oh, the coffee. Is it like coffee. a bowl of coffee? Yeah. With a hat? Why the moustache um, then? What's on what's on the order? We're paying two for a for a, for a latte. There was a latte, yo. <laughs> yeah, two slash three, two slash three. What though? Credits? That's cheap as, as anything. Yeah, that's a, you can buy a, a lot of those for the price of a vandal. But right now they're going to be going straight onto site. Price of a vandal going to be worth it for the side of Team Shah. So they pick up one and get themselves on to site. But Heaven is still being very much controlled by Team Penguin. Not giving up too much, but Spore able to get a quick kill and keep moving. Shah as well going to pick up one. And they are just able to keep themselves on this site. But 
They're not alone here. Penguin going to find one back onto Yonko. But now in a one versus two. Can they make it happen? It's not going to be so. But three guns removed. It's pretty good for the economy from Team Penguin. Yeah, really well played there. It's going to be an, a lot weaker by now from Shah the Pimple. Still going to force up. They're still going to have rifles on board for everyone apart from this jet who has those knives. So not really going to feel the damage of that too much. But this is the all-important round. This is the one where we need to see one team pull ahead and sharingly might be able to kick it off with that thrash. But it's not all plain sailing for the side of Team Shah because they're not all bought, right? You look at Get Yonko, I believe they're going to have to play knives. Maybe a little disadvantage there. We'll have to see how they do play it. Going all B here again, looking to say, you know what? The first hit worked out pretty well. Blind going in, there's the jet dash. Yonko able to keep himself in the air and gets the kill onto bangers as well. Knives coming in clutch and an easy take from Team Shah. Straight away onto site. Sage Wall ain't helping you there, buddy. As retake now going to be having to come through from Team Penguin. Already another member taken out. And this retake is looking less and less likely by the minute. Yeah, Team Penguin going for quite a deep flank here. But obviously there is the turret. There is that util able to keep them at bay. Prince Charming trying to step up. But going to be contacted. So key able to pick up two. Penguin finding another. And they are starting to collapse through onto Cyber Penguin. Going to get caught out. Charlie now holding the back side. But it looks like Soki just going to keep their rifle. Not going to give that one away. And a very strong hold from Sharp. Doesn't even want a piece of that. Doesn't even want to try contest it. And I think realises that there's not enough time there to really make a play. Backs out of that one. But going forward now, we look at this money. Really weak buy from Team Penguin, so it should be that third round over to Team Shah the Pimple. As long as they can keep their composure, keep their cool, because we've seen a lot of teams throw on this round when they decide to just send it onto a site and get a bit too aggressive and then get taken out by cheesy things like this double bucky. And I, I want to know how Team Penguin is setting up here because we've seen two very fast attacks on to B. They're just kind of pressing the go button and getting straight down, getting the spike up early. And it looks like we're going to get round three. So we'll see if the KJ switch up has changed things. Flo going to take them out immediately. So that's going to be a no. And they're going to start walking onto site once again. A bit of a drop down early though. Maybe going to cause some problems. Jonko though, Flo also going to be able to pick up multiple kills. They take the site. Four members dead. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel, Soki. Where are my team? Where have they gone? <laughs> Literally runs and just <laughs> stares into the concrete. Just doesn't even know what to do anymore. And I guess now you're just paying for exit flag frags. That's the only rifle online and they didn't go to your site. Maybe they saw the last game. Maybe they realised that Soki is an absolute menace and not someone you want to be dealing with. So staying away I, from that site. I think they're subscribing to the uh, the old saying of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And B has been working, so they're going to keep going B. I'm pretty sure they're going to keep going B until it doesn't work. And, uh, yeah, I feel like Soki is running across the map being like, Don't worry, guys, just live. Just stay alive. I'll be there soon. And it's just like, uh, you're all dead. Okay, well, I'm not going to 1v5 this. So uh, keeping it keeping it safe, keeping it controlled. And maybe looking for an exit frag, but not going to find anything. Going to keep their rifle, which uh, will be in keeping with the rest of the team. They are going to be able to buy now. So they are going to have all the rifles as we get to see a nice up-close uh, look at Brim's hat there. Nice beret. As a oh, a timeout. timeout <laughs> Quick, pull up the TFT. Get J Rose TFT back on this. <laughs> <laughs> we bring it back for round two. But <laughs> timeout gives us a bit of time to reflect on what's happening in the game. Not sure if it's a tech one. Not sure if they're actually going to be discussing tactics here. If we assume they're discussing tactics, the one thing they're going to need to figure out how to deal with are these very fast rushes, which is something that Sage actually can deal with. Maybe not in the form of the wall, but in the form of the slow orb. That is a piece mm. of utility that can really stuff a rush, really slow it down, obviously by the name of the ability, and kind of cut off any momentum that you try to gain. And I think there's also some potential of switching around where you have certain players, right? We've talked about how good Soki was on defense on that Haven map. Maybe, you know, swap them to B, see if that forces the side of Team Shah to kind of orientate themselves over to A, which I think... I'm not sure actually. I don't really play much KJ. Which site is the is the KJ site? I'm more used to Cipher on, a, it is, on the uh, split. It is normally the B site because you can you can hardcore lock down that funnel that is just outside garage. But we haven't 
garage. Why am I even? What am I going on about garage? But we haven't really seen it done to much effectiveness. I think that's because most of the time, before it even happens, Killjoy has just been bopped from the gar garage peak. Hmm. Yeah, garage. You're watching a lot of American TV, like. Yeah, I am. I don't know what's going on with me. Oh, may the wall break, Insta. Feels bad, man. Yep. And now you, gone. you you wait twenty seconds and and you realise that your sage has, has, has spent almost a k just to stall the round out by twenty seconds. And uh, the creep. Up into ramp. So you playing very deep on site hit, so not going to get into contact for a while, but when they do, they get the headshot straight away. One done. But I believe the bomb is going to be picked up there. It's going to be recovered. So not in dire straits just yet, but Penguin does have two in front of them. Going to get the blind. Blow, though, going to step out. Gets the kill, though. Almost gets the second. Yonko able to get back to safety, but now repeaks. Gets a kill, but it is going to be the backup from Soki. We talked about how dangerous they can be. A 3k to clean up the round and take a bit of momentum away from Team Shaw. Nah, but that that kill onto Shaw was, was a bit mad. That was a bit too bad. This first one, you know, just casual classic. I don't know what Charlie's really looking at on this, but the flick at the end here. Boom, gets one, gets two off of that flick. That is madness. Damn. So you be popping off. Shout out. Shout out to them. I want to see if they can keep doing that. But we, I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised by Team Shaw. I'm surprised that they're going for mm. A again. I feel like they had B on lock. They knew what they were doing. They had the play. Now they're switching up to A. And it feels like they're almost forcing a new strat that isn't necessarily what's going to win them rounds. No, and they're trying to brute force their way in. Thrash. Instantly going to be taken down. This lockdown is used. Jerry and Lee trying to peek out, trying to be that hero. You are going on to site with Soki, who manages to find one through the smoke already. 4-4 four, four as we progress through this round. Charlie, in a pretty nice spot here, able to hold quite a lot of ground, making it difficult for them to drop out of heaven or walk out CT. And a pretty tough one to look through. But right now, Charlie Pibble just on site, able to keep them at bay. Team Penguin. Trying to mobilize from different angles. So key. Claiming a bit of ground. Getting on site. Let's go. Sawn. Seen. Gets killed. Penguin takes that one. Bangers picks up another. And I'm damn. That all happened so quick. Very clinical take back from Team Penguin. They're just able to pick up their own one and get it done and take another round. And how do you even play against this from the side of Team Shah when you've got a player like Soki who's just. Just randomly walks into sight. You look at your minimap, just walks through, manages to kill one, gets two more there that we didn't see. And it's just absolutely crazy in this game. Nine to three already. Really putting the team on their back for some of these rounds. And we saw it last game. I don't know, it's the, it's the defense-sided jet, I guess. And, and sometimes we meme, you know, about we got, we got our one, you know. But yeah. sometimes it's all you need, right? And we see there... Penguin picks up one, we see Bangers get another, obviously Soki having some really good plays as well, but it's the fact that they're taking out so many angles in such short succession, the retakes are just going so well for them. But we'll see, back to B is going to go sh Team Shah, we'll see if this gives them more success. As they dash onto site already, Sharingly is here though, and the slow orb has completely cut them off, but it's all about who wins the gunfights now. Two for two, and that orbital strike going to give them sight and put us into a retake. 3v3. Team Shah. Do we have Jet Knives, but no other possible ultimates? Res is available for Kraken Joy. I'm maybe going to go for this, but Flo creeping up almost. Getting vision of them. Now we're going to see the rest come out onto Soki. Charlie holding the angle, though. Able to keep Flo alive, but Kraken Joy going to kill them off. Yonko gets the kill onto, your onto them, but Kraken Joy... Can they be the hero here? Can they get the ace running out? Doesn't get it, Charlie, with a good off angle. Takes the kill and secures the round. And it looked like it could have been the hero play from Kraken Joy there. Manages to pick up four, but just not able to eke out that last kill. As we see there, the Sage utility used to great effectiveness. That slow orb stuffs the attack. And it was a close round, but it would have definitely been a lot closer and most likely going the way of Team Shah if it wasn't for that slow walk just cutting off the fast hit. 
I just... I can't... I, I don't know. I don't know why they're going A again, Snow. Like, I feel way. like B has been unstoppable mm. from the side of Team Shah, but they're, they're just really wanting to commit over to A again. And Soki shows them exactly why they shouldn't go there, gets another kill early, and forces them to kind of slow down. A pick mid, going to be found. Wall isn't utilised within that round. And we're not seeing a rotate yet. They're just going to brute force their way onto this A site, it seems. But they have taken out the raid boss. Soki is down, but site's still not safe. You see a lot of weird angles coming out. Penguin is a little bit of a difficult one. Going to peek out, gets one. Flo going to be able to pick up that kill. As now, sharing Lee again in another one. Bit of a strange position, but so is Shah. Going to come up on the lurk. Gets one from heaven, and surely... Can put a bit of a spanner in the works of Sharing Lee, but Sharing Lee, smart rotations, gets the kill, but now in you. You see them, Flo gets the kill, Sharing Lee tries to creep out of heaven, not going to be today. Just sees that gun barrel poking that slight bit out from heaven. And we see here, not the same cool composure that we usually had from Team Penguin. They go a bit aggressive, they go for those individual solo peaks. And goes the way of Team Shah on that one. But these rounds are so, so close. They, they could go either way. It's these 1v1 clutches that it's coming down to. Yeah, now a pretty tough round for Team Penguin, right? Having to go on the save, having to look for that thrifty. It is going to be tough as we now see Team Shah going back to B. So expect the fast take, expect the fast play. But look at this fast rotate. From B on the flank, Sherry okay. kicks it off with one, and they're looking for more. Flo going to trade back. Prince Charming, Yonko getting in on this madness, but it is going to be all the way of Team Shah. They clean up four kills, and now it looks like they're just going to be on the manhunt. And it was a nice play down through mid to flank them. And it's, it's one of those where you've got to commit to the crazy play. You've got to see if you can make it work. They did get the first one. Weren't able to get much more. But it wasn't a round that they were really putting much scope into. But it puts Team Shah now on six. It gives them a really nice advantage. No matter what, they are going to end this half even. And their economy is good as well. So for the rest of this half, they're going to be absolutely fine. Well... They might be fine economy, but I don't think they're going to be fine yeah, in anyways. terms of a, a play because Soki has now got the op. So things might change a little bit here. You've got to be careful. We're showing the... Talking about careful. Does peek out into five members there. Team Shah going to try and force them way through. KJ going to drop the lockdown, and it looks like B-Site should be theirs very shortly. Seven seconds ticking down. We'll see Soki. Can they wrap around and move that operator? But as they do, smart play. Team Shaw, they're going to all rotate to A, and look at this, the clear oh, no. path to victory is there! They're so dizzy right now, everyone from oh, Team Penguin you. ended up on that B site. As the Seek is now going to be used from Team Shaw, they're going to see there's no one on site just yet. They're going to make their way there, but Thrash is available, and it's a 5 on 5 retake with Lockdown already going down. Here we go! Orbital Strike going to be coming out as well, trying to clear a bit of space in CT. Look at them all clumped up on site. One good spray can end them all. Penguin going to be able to pick up the first kill. Flow! Kills or Soku misses the op. There's now Mayhem on the site. Shots are fired and it is going to be Team Penguin that come out ahead. And it's all well and good. It's something we spoke about before, about... Your goal in the game shouldn't just be the bomb going down. Because the bomb going down is good, but if you have no space to work with, you don't really have any utility to use to actually take these fights, it's not really going to do you much justice. Because we see there a very fast retake from Team Penguin. The benefit to them being all grouped B means that they can literally sprint to A together and instantly start that retake. And so well effectively played by them. And Team Shah, it was a really nice fake to get themselves onto A. But they didn't really have a plan past planting the ball. Yeah, and I don't know how you feel about it, right? Like, I think it's a smart sale in terms of lockdown used, get the rotation. But I think realistically, if you haven't set that up as a fake where your team yeah. is already moving to A, it's just a little bit late, you know? Like, they got to site basically at the same time as Team Penguin, and it doesn't give you 
that kind of luxury of, okay, we just burned like 10, 13 seconds off that clock to give them a little bit more time pressure. But talking about pressure, Yonko on site gets a kill onto sharing the flow, going to follow up as well. And they are just running through onto site. This is what we've seen time and time again from them taking this B really strongly. And with the numbers advantage, it should be a good hold for them. We see one player that's still alive. Soki has been a superstar for this team, but Flo taking that battle with the overheal, already able to do a massive amount of damage and bangers, not able to find that kill, and they shouldn't be able to find this round. Soki, is it time? 24 HP, no dream though. <laughs> Yonko gonna put them to sleep. That's a bit of a nightmare. As it is now going to be 7-5 to Team the Shah. But let's kind of talk about the map, right? Attack sided, defense sided. Yeah. What are you kind of saying about this one? What are the expectations moving forwards now? Enemy kill. I feel like it depends. It honestly depends on Where which region is playing. Oh. <laughs> when you have a Sage, yeah. <laughs> no, if you're... if When I watch games, the, the one kind of region where this is a very attack sided map has been the pacific region and that is because those teams are so aggressive they will sprint through site they will take those fights mid they will dash through your sage ward they do not care it's prx w key gaming and it's what works on split because if you can get through these main chokeholds and onto site it becomes a lot easier to play this map but so far seems like from team shah a bit of a slower round four group towards b and already these fights are being taken Yonko, aggressive so is Flo, able to find an early kill, and now moving forward with the Cherif. Playing that W key gaming, gonna get one, will be traded out, but the fact that they've already taken them down into a 3v4 is really strong from Team Shaw. And that's the thing, it's... While they're not having that Sage War mid, they've got smokes, they've got members committed towards it. Three players now, they're gonna push him through mid, and... Even though the bomb's gonna go down, it's gonna be a four versus two right here. Out of charges. Yeah, no, I don't know what happened mid you casting there. It sounded like you went underwater, but <laughs> you're back on land now. And uh, talking about land, we are going to see the spike landed on site. Crackenjaw gets the plant, but now in trouble. Just getting wrapped by everyone. Flo going to roll them up and put them down. 3k with the Sheriff and Team Shaw looking dominant still. They looked good on attack, but they might even be looking better on defense. And the thing is... It's just, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's, I feel like having this Sage, now that you're not on defense, it's not really going to offer you much. I spoke about that B wall that you can maybe use to get on site sometimes. It's okay. It gets you sight. It doesn't get you much more than that. I feel like to really make good use of this Sage, you need to have established control on a site and then use it to cut off any kind of rotates. For example, use it to cut off screens if you get yourself onto A. Make it so that you funnel everyone to heaven and you can look to play off it off that. But on this save round, I'm not expecting anything too massive from Team Penguin. Down the dog. Getting a lot of vision there, spotting out the whole team. And now Yonku trying to continue their domination, but getting chased down. Classic is a free gun, by the way. <laughs> Oh no, not the right clicks. And they just pivoted towards B. It's actually a really nice play through fence, the bait and switch. And if they can find another kill here, this could be massive as the wall. That is exactly what I spoke about. Funnel everyone in towards CT. Make them have to retake from one angle. But is it going to keep them safe enough? Flow in CT. The rest of the team starting to go through heaven. Breaking that wall. Line's gonna go out. Flo getting pushed and sharing. We've seen how dangerous they can be with that weapon. Getting the kill there. Now, Crash Enjoyer is gonna get the kill through the smoke. Nice kill onto Shah. And they are taking down guns. But Prince Charming is holding on to that defuse. Gets one more kill. Will they stick it? Will they fake it? Who will? No, it's gonna be the stick. Gonna be the clutch. And Team Penguin do not get that round. Team Shah will pick it up. But for what cost? No, four guns? Four guns off of the board. It's the second round. It's a round that you're expected to win. There's, It's it's probably one of the most one-sided rounds in Valorant. But maybe outside of the bonus, but even then the bonus, you're normally going in with Bulldogs and stuff. And the fact that it was this close is so detrimental for the side of Team Shah because they have pretty much nothing going into this round.
Pocket Phantom, coming out of clutch, that's all I'm saying. Frenzy, putting in work for sharing lead, but is the buy going to lead them to go that one step further? They were one kill away from taking the round. Now with the rifles, can they make that a reality? Going up ramps. Bit of a different attack pattern here. Kind of hesitating a little bit here, just waiting yeah. to see if anyone will out pee because we do see the omen on the look. They know what's at stake, J-Real. They know that this could be the game-turning moment. There's already one pick taken down. Sharingly able to get themselves a kill. As a lurk through vents could be the make or break from Penguin. Yorga picks up that kill and now can get that rifle. Penguin was able to find one but not getting two. But Team Shah, they are two versus three here. They are quite split up as well. And it looks like the fake has been sold. They were going to go to Beeb. Look at them. They've sold them. They've sold them dreams. Oh, my days. But they're waiting. Team Penguin are not going quick. They're going to use Thresh. They're going to make sure they clear it all out. But little do they know, no one from Team Shah is anywhere near. Yeah, this is the point now where you look to get deep positions. I think you want to play angles that are a bit more unexpected. The wall off is nice. They're going to know that it's towards heaven and Sharingly has a big task here, gets one. And with Yo Yonko all alone, they have everything to do. Ooh. This one. Going to jump up. Can't jump over that one. The wall. You're not going to like that. Coming in clutch. <laughs> yeah, that's a concussion right there, but Jet luckily able to fit through that gap. Skinny Queen. Right now, Sage though. Oh. Behind map. Oh, no way the positioning didn't get checked. Yonko going to get shot in the back. And a round secured by Team Penguin. And a much needed round if they have any hope in this game. Spike One planted. off of double digits from the side of Team Penguin. And I feel like a lot of the times that double digits is, is, is the point where you almost confirm yourself the win in most of these games. I mean, we have seen big comebacks, but... You know, you don't want to be four, three rounds down now. You don't want to make it four. It's going to be this first four by round. And Team Penguin are stacking possibly towards a B or a mid hit. Oh my gosh. Damn. Five members. <laughs> All taken the shot. Yonko is still there. Dash is in. Oh, oh, that had to be a misclick. Bang going to be able to pick up that kill. It doesn't matter whether you misclick or didn't. You will be on the floor dead. Team Shana without one of their members. How is that going to change this round? And they're so quick on the flank. Shah, already behind them in mid as soon as any sound is made. This could be massive if they find the perfect timing. Out. They are just waiting. They're just holding strong, but Shah going to peek out, gets two. Doesn't get three, though. Good recovery from Penguin, but he's going to make it a 3v3. Equalising Yonko's earlier aggression. And now they can sit back a little bit more. Soki, I'm going to get them onto sight. It's going to be able to walk them on. But now the peak, the timing isn't going to be enough. Charlie gets one. one and he's going to go down. Enemy. Gets two as well. Huge play from them. The timing was great. Gets the third as well. Absolute hero play on the B side. And that takes them to double figures, Snow. You talked about it being a little bit different. And they changed that play up, and it was the, just the aggression. They've realized that so far, I mean, it's, we're going to see the firing squad battling through and the miss dash there. But the switch up came from Sharp, just taking that risk. Realizing that normally, for the side of Team Penguin, they're all grouped up together on these hits, they're all playing off of each other. And so they just lurk out behind them, finds two kills, really nicely played. Oh. Man, flow is crispy. They, 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 are, they are crispy. They've been hitting a lot of good shots, and uh, this round is no exception. Clearing out a bit of B, buy some bit of space, and it means that they, they kind of have the inkling that it is going to be over to A. We do see the full stack moving forwards is the peak from Yonko almost getting him killed but going to be able to get safely back to safety as now Team Penguin just scrapping it out for this space but Yonko gets taken down Penguin with the classic once again just causing nightmares with this gun Penguin now upgrading seems like he's playing gun game the way he's switching weapons here 
Oh, flying. from flying. behind! Flying. The triple! And Penguin, in the everlasting game of Gun Game, has upgraded to that Vandal. Maybe the epitome outside of an op that they could get, but it is it enough for them to win this in the clutch? The oh, I feel it. He could get shot on the head. <laughs> yeah. You know when you know. Like, yeah. You know when you you just you, you, you see it coming. It was a smart play from Flo, right? They didn't they didn't go over to the side of A. They knew there was a chance that they could just alter way onto B. They played the time. They played the momentum. The team shot. Just that one step ahead, and I, and I have to say, big credit. To show themselves, this flank, absolute game changer. Yeah. And look at it, once again, it's it's Shah being willing to go for these aggressive, these really risky flanks. If they're caught out there, that could be the round over. It's a Vandal over. It could just be the end of the game. But they come through on that one. Shah, that's two rounds in a row where they've looked to lurk out A. I feel like if you're on the side of Team Penguin, that's a weakness you could exploit. You know with no sound. Shah is just going to look to creep up and flank behind you. So make a bit of sound B, wait for Shah to try creep behind, get that easy pick. And it's also like don't over peek, right? We saw Flo pick up a pretty nice early kill. Yes, it's a 50-50, but I feel like Team Shah, they've just had that little bit of extra aim advantage yeah. over Team Penguin. So, you know, maybe play it safer. Play it where you can get an advantage without having to kind of put yourself in a dangerous situation. And, and also... I think the big thing for me is that, as you said, team shot on that flank, you know, get that KJ util to kind of watch your flank, get that little bit of a heads up, because if you don't have any idea, you are going to be getting caught out time and time again, because that initial execute onto heaven, onto getting into ropes, was really strong. They picked up momentum, they got a couple mm -hmm. of kills, they got some guns themselves, and they were looking in a really, really um, compounding position, but they couldn't make it happen into anything else, due to the fact they were getting pincered from different angles. And it seems like they're going to opt to keep the same game style. Group up, look to get pressure towards mid. They have a flash ready and waiting. But Yonko, able to hold them off with a smoke for just a few seconds. I like this from Bangers there, playing a little bit safer. Nice group up. But as we said, Bangers, they're going to get caught by Flo. They had to walk slowly and surely, but Flo now trying to save the site. Gets one more. Going to be able to dismiss themselves back into garage, back to safety, and has equalized it to 3 3. Penguin peeking out and gets the kill. Flow removed. Two now versus three. But Orbital Strike able to clear out parts of side. Shaw oh, again. Flank position coming in clutch, and here are the Seekers. Thrash also available. They're going to be able to find their way onto site at the very least. Charlie. Gonna get hit by in the face with this. Smokes are gonna come through. Flashes are available. No one detained just yet. The first pick goes down. Sharingly cleans it up. And just like that, Team Penguin able to get themselves around on the board. And maybe they got the strats, right? They, they did take a pause before this round. It looked like they were much cleaner, much more on the same page, and they were able to make it work. Yes, there is always going to be difficulties, some really good shooters from the side of Team Shah, but overall, Team Penguin holding it down, getting a lot of good momentum. But the question that I do have is they had to use a decent amount of ultimates for that one. They still do have the lockdown available from Bangers, but not having a couple of those ults could change everything. You see here the mid play once again. It worked last round. Right on, run it back. As they push through this aggression, they just want to take these fights. They want to push the pace. And they're going to manage to find that opening kill again. Yeah, Soki on form. Whatever's changed, they're back on it. Back on getting those kills and now leading the charge. Exactly what we want to see from the bangers on the slow push up. And CT is even being taken. By the side of Team Penguins, they are locked in right now, and finding a bit of momentum. But Charlie trying to shot them down, gets taken out as Flo with the op. Close range gets one kill. Using that thing like a shotgun out here. So one versus three. Don't pick. I feel it. like you could. Don't pick it. Don't pick it. Oh. <laughs> Just barely Ooh. by a pixel, and I think that's Flo committing to a save. I think. Yeah, I think it's a smart play here. You've got rounds in the bank. You only need two more. They still need to get you know, the five rounds to even take you to overtime. Play the money, you know? Play the operator. Ooh. Oh, the timing. Here we go. 
Are they going to get out in time? Yeah, they should be fine. Not even close. And Op is online and Op Rainer! It's a, it's a thing for contention. People talk about it. They say, oh, it's not great because, you know, if you're using your all, you're not going to get the uh, bonus boost speed. It's bonus attack speeds. But attack speed? I'm playing League as well, the, yeah. the firing rate and stuff. But it was this like is TFT earlier. That, yeah, it was. It's PRX. They run this. They normally run it on bind. The They play Rainer with the operator. And the main reason why... As I say that, there's pass it over to the jet. But yeah. it's it's because you can dismiss. You essentially, yeah. if you get that initial pick, you can dismiss out and you get that free peak. I would take Rainer off over Sova off any day as a... <laughs> Playing the jet off. That's, that's the real off right there. Crack the enjoy. He's going to be able to get the res and now sharing Lee causing some problems right now in B main. Going to be able to get up to heaven and take another kill. They have taken full control and right now Team Penguin are looking solid. And maybe Team Shah starting to regret not having that Sage. Because mid, they just haven't been able to hold it. And lack of wall, lack of slow. The only way to really stop it is, is use numbers. Use some util, use that sky, pull them over to be able to flash and take those fights. But we haven't seen it so far. And Team Penguin is just abusing that fact. Yeah, and it looks like another Operator save. And... I was talking about this the other day. It's like, yes, save the operator. It's a good decision. But you can only save the operator so many rounds, right? At some point, you have to let go of it and start playing a different way. Because if you're always saving the op, if you're always keeping yourself at arm's reach, you're just losing out rounds, right? This is going to go to 9-11. We're then three rounds away from security for Team Penguin, four rounds away from a win. And Team Shaw need to have a bit of momentum back in their wings. Yeah, only two rounds to go, but they're two of the harder rounds to eke out, especially if you've lost the momentum, especially if Peng Team Penguins found almost what seems to be the winning formula, which is the PRX style of W key it up mid, to find as many kills as we can. And we see that there's been a bit of a switch up. They've dedicated two members now. We see Yonko and Shah. Yonko, sorry, and Shah. Playing to fight for mid. But Team Penguin, realising that there's going to be a pivot, are just going to quick it A. Ooh, so key. So smooth with it. Peaks out, quick kill, moves to heaven. And gives their team a very strong look at sight. We're going to see Little Man go for the plant. But Prince Charming able to answer back with one kill there. Plant is going to go down and in heaven. <laughs> oh, gun differential, man. Stinger. What is the Stinger? It's, it, there's a reason it was nerfed. There's a reason it was nerfed on Flo demonstrating that right now. As they've upgraded to the Vandal, I feel like this game has just been an everlasting game of gun game, like you said before. Yonko, though, with the op, is moving on to site here. A difficult task in this retake. Flo, going to slowly peek round. Site is clear, but there is the blind. Beautiful from Dizzy. They don't, they, they can't stick that. Nice molly there coming out from the Gecko. Another op save? No chance. No, op gonna go down. And just like that, double digits for both teams. It's gonna have to see if if there's if there's any kind of switch up that will work because these entries, I mean when they're so confident, when T Penguins have won, what has it been now? Four rounds back to back, just constantly sprinting onto site, finding these opening picks, and you know, we look at the kill differentials on these teams and you can see it should be the way of Team Shah, but Team Penguin are able to pull out the round every time. Yeah, and do you believe... A thing called love? Well, I was going to say the op on Jet, because right now they've got another one, but it hasn't caused them to get any wins of rounds yet. And now straight up into heaven <laughs> with Thrash. Yonko going to get one back, though. Is this their time to show the operator skills? Peeking around, doesn't manage to get any more. Flo going to try and step up. But only able to get one three for three so far. Rez not available because they are dead for Team Penguin. And, and I think now. Will they be able to hold out? And I think more importantly, Thrash wasn't able to be picked up again. So they're not going to have access to reusing that ultimate, a big reason that makes Gecko so effective. 
It says 45 seconds on the board. Plenty of time for the attack to still choose a site to hit. The defense hovering towards B. Sharing Lee. Again, the mid control has been such a pivotal part of the gameplay of Team Penguin. They are showing exactly why Flo is going to be able to get one kill. Are they going to be dropped down on Charlie? We've seen him clutch before. Can he clutch again? 1v1 Penguin versus Charlie. They know he's in the corner. Ooh, maybe he didn't. Spike still on heaven though. Not been claimed Can't just TV? yet. Oh, he's got it. Good. Watch them. Ten seconds. Oh, and that's so... That's so sad to see. Charlie had the site locked down, but the from the shadows. TP up to heaven, and the off angle is going to be all Penguin needs to secure it. And the round score has evened off of Penguin. Just five rounds in a row. It's it's been absolute domination after that timeout. And I want to know what the money's saying. Is it a save? Now we're going to have to see out on the side of Last Team Shah because Spike. like you said it looked so good it looked so promising they were on 11 it looked like they were basically just going to take this one home but five rounds in a row Team Penguin have come back we talked about it in game one it almost feels like they just flipped that switch and the switch is for sure on the lights are here they are home and they are looking to take this one all the way to the bank a couple more rounds potentially go their way and it is all over this time a bit of a different strategy here gonna play Straight up mid from Team Penguin, but a split attack from Team... Sorry, from Team Penguin, but a Team Shard is straight up mid. But if they find these two kills here, puts them in a 5 versus 3 if no one dies. It's actually a really good situation for them. It's a triple peek out. And yes, Bomb goes down, but at what cost? Well, the cost of two members. You know, two members, but as you said, it is going to depend on how this next bit goes. Look at them five stack running. If someone had an Odin, they could have an absolute field day here, but I don't think that's going to be what is about to happen right now. As in goes Yonko, another knife kill. That's three. Add it to the collection. <laughs> just enough guns. <laughs> Yonko, just the arms dealer right here. Sharingly from behind gets a two off of that spray. But it is just them alone. The orbital strike, the peak from Shah, the molly is there, but it just misses. And my favorite part about that round is Yonku just gets those first three kills, just throwing rifles back to their team. Yeah. Doing it all, man. Getting the kills, supplying the team. They were both the weapon and the shield and the, the bag with weapons in it. Like, sharing the almost managing to get a huge spray there, almost getting three, but only taking two. And... That one differential was kind of the difference. They couldn't get out of the heaven window to get a good molly. And obviously the spike being, although planted for them, not in their favour. But last round, potentially here. If it is time for Shah to win the game, it is now. And they know it. And they seem to already be re-rotating. It's this same play again, but the opening pick. And this time... There's a Vandal to swap to. As Team Penguin, they don't know what to do as Yonko's heating up and is feeling themselves. Sharing me. Also here to get a kill though. Charlie popping up once again. And this seems like Team Shaw are finding their momentum. But Team Penguin not done just yet. Two versus three. Captain still alive. Thrash still available. But are they going to use it? They're not going for it. They go for the blind peak, but they get the kill. They managed to make it work. Risky, but it does end up in their favor surely they use thrash soon they're gonna go for the play 1v1 we've seen this before but no ultimate for penguin there's no util on the side of charlie just a couple of smokes penguin at the advantage here and it's so so tense You can fear the knife drop. No one stepping. Heaven and CT. Will they cross paths? Yes. Is there and the kill for Penguin? We're going to overtime. 12-12. But we're going to have to delve a little bit deeper to find out who's going to win this game. And the question is, does this Team Penguin's winning formula that they found on attack, this momentum that they were able to gather, will this be the thing that pulls them back into the game? Will this be the thing that gives them that rallying shout towards overtime? But we did see T 
Team Shah, their attack was effective. Their early defensive rounds were effective as well. And we see a lot of pings over towards this A site. A lot of pings. I, You know what? If I was calling the plays and I was Team Shah, I would say go B. But they're stacking onto A. I think that Soki was aware of that momentum, uh, thought process as well because they've gone over to B. But this A hit could be clean and clinical. We're going to see the dog though leading them in. Yonko straight off the bat charging. Do they just send it? Full send, go or nah, sharing the in the corner with the Odin, gets one, now the blind. Gonna step up, looking for more, gets taken out though, Flo, with a heavy recovery. And just like that, sight gonna be taken, Heaven still in control of Team Penguin, it's not the worst situation to be in for a retake. And I feel like it's just gonna be chaos here, J-Real. We're gonna have to see them get onto the side though. I feel like it's all gonna happen in a quick moment. Both teams setting up. Very important round 4v4. Team Shah locking themselves in into off angles. Here comes Soki taken out. Bangers are going to trade nicely. Penguin getting the kill with Bangers as well. Now they're starting to mobilize onto side. But you've got to be careful. Check them corners. Charlie stepping back in. Gets one, gets two. Can they get three? No! Bangers gets the kill and will get the defuse. One round to Team Penguin. They only need one more. And it's so close to just being it right there. If that molly goes off, that's a round over to Team Shah. But we see off the back of this and that kill, not being able to get it onto Banga is so detrimental. And now, the moment that we've, we've been waiting for. This is probably one of the best comebacks I've seen in TGH Customs in such a long time. And no one is surprised that we're going to see a timeout. Last time Penguin, Team Penguin took a timeout, we saw that miraculous run come from them. Second to breathe, you know? Second to get that clarity. One round is all it takes for Team Penguin to win the finals. Team Shaw, they looked steady, they looked consistent, but they just weren't able to kind of execute in those later stages of attack, and now they are on defense. This is where they were having a little bit more problems. Both teams winning seven rounds on their attack side. Team Shah, in my opinion, have the uphill battle here. But can they make it work? They had some really good rounds. Maybe they need to go for a little bit of a chaotic strategy. You know, when they all went down mid, they were able to make mm. it work. And at the moment, they're not really hovering towards anything. We are going to see them start to set up, and it might be that mid play you spoke about. But both teams know... Team Penguin's aware as well. They know that this mid play was so good for Team Shah. They want to stop it. Split attack here. Not going all aggressive. That mid control we talked about so many times being a pivotal factor. Soki is going to be moving up with Sharing Lee. We've seen them cause so much problems. So many even. And so they're going for that again. But there's Yonko holding firm, getting a kill. And saying no way to your mid control, but that does leave A completely open. Bang is now going to be getting onto site. Plant should be going down shortly. And we're seeing some momentum switch as Crack enjoy able to pick up a kill as they try to go through vents. Nyonko going to manage to find their way into heaven and the run and gun from Flo. Means that we might be heading into a second overtime as it's all up to the team captain and bangers. The angles, man. Too many angles, you can only watch so many, and when the side of Team Shah come from four different ones, there's only one conclusion. It's overtime number two. 13-13, and these teams are so evenly matched. It is neck and neck right now. You could cut the tension with a knife. There's Team Penguin here. Anticipating maybe an A hit as they have their Sentinel and Soki both towards this site, but Team Shah are all stacked outside B. They're going for the try and tested. This is what I would play. Like this is exactly how I would do it. Go for that B hit. It worked so well for them in those early attack rounds. Just make it go again as we are gonna see the Molly to buy a bit of time coming out from Sharing Lee. And so I would start moving slows. We didn't like them at first, but they are starting to make things work. 
Let's right now on Sunday go Yonko with a beautiful shooting gets one but here comes the return of Penguin they able to move through like the Empress they are a B site and pick up another defensive win look look and I'm gonna I'm gonna say I hate Sage for the wall I think the slows yep. were used so perfectly in that round mm. because we know that Team Shah likes to send it all five. We know that these entries from Yonko, Yonko have been so effective. And the fact that you're able to use those slows, use those mollies to give your team time to rotate and instantly fight them on site was just so good. And Team Penguin with one round left once again, but they're stacked outside mid and so are Team Penguin and Shah. Mid, such a big component of these games with Shah. Open it up, taking out two huge players of Team Penguin. They do not want to lose mid control. They do not want to lose this game. And they're doing everything in their power. Two more go down. The 1v5 bangers. This is where you live up to the name. Because this would be a banger of a clip. All alone. An All almost alone. seemingly impossible task. Oh, I thought we were gonna. I thought we were gonna kick it off with one. I thought we were gonna get the yeah. one, and then we'll see if we can get it done. But it's not even gonna be. Flow close that one out. Flawless round. And defense. Woo! Yeah. It's uh. Team Shah. It's heating up. In the words of J Cole, "Fool me one time, shame on me. Fool me once, can't get fooled again." Because they were ready for that mid play. And we're going to have to see who pivots it up because right now Team Shah actually changing it. Going for a, a bit of a default, a bit of a more lurky play. See if they can maybe draw some members over to B. Taking a, taking a play out of Team Penguin's book. Time to hunt. They're going to come out. Selling the fake on B. I like this. They're giving them more time, more plays. And in the words of Drake, more life in this next round. Looking for that sacred number 15. So we are going to be moving on to site, but remember KJ is set up here. There they go on the site. Yonko going to get the kill. Flo picks it up. And they're able to take out a huge momentum from Team Penguin. Now Soki popping up out of that corner. Gets one back. Four versus three in the retake. Can they get the defuse? Charlie and Soki. Pretty weird angles to each other. Sharing the up top with the Odin. And it just feels like Team Shaw had it down. They had the numbers. They had the headshots. And they're able to pick up another round. And this time, they are the ones ahead going into the second half of this overtime. And if, you, if you've if you been keeping track during this overtime, both these teams have won their defense rounds. It's it's truly Team Shaw's game to win right now. They've, they've been playing so well up until this point. They had the lead. Team Penguin pulled it back. And they just want to have that exasperated sigh of relief as they pull this one out. But only two members now on A. And all five of Team Penguin stacked outside this site. Are they going to be like a leopard and seal the deal over the Penguins? We'll find out very soon. As Team A... Damn, they're already on site. They're already able to get a momentum. Oh no, wait, what? What, is, what am I looking at? Like Bangers was cut off. The team was cut off by the Mollies. Bangers is going to be the solo player on this. Lurk, going to be spotted though. And maybe that gives Team Shah the info they need. But there's more members now coming over towards A. As Team Shah are lost, they don't know what to do. They've got no info. They've got no sound. It's all a gamble at this point. But they do have passion. They do have coordination. They do have aggression. We'll have to see how they play this one out. They still have heaven control. They still have a lot of space in their vicinity. But Penguin going to be able to pick up one here. Team Penguin are not done just yet. They are going to take back heaven. Take it with three kills. And now Team Shaw. We thought that he would have this defense round. But it looks like Snow. We might be getting more overtime. But there is still plays to be made. 2v3. Heaven is where they're going to peek out of. No one is going to be seen. TP to get a bit of info. Behind map is two. Shots being fired by Shah. Flow going to start walking around as well. They know one is long. Shah going to be taken out. Penguin on the 4k. One more could secure it. But Kraken Joy is going to secure the round. 
No ace, but another win. Another overtime. Snow, you've been here before. What does it take to win these rounds? I mean, I thought Team Shah had it. They had the opening pick, but they just they weren't anticipating the the re-hit through ramps to it completely caught them off guard. They just weren't expecting it. And I think Team Shah. They had it figured out on attack last round. It was play a little bit of a lurk, play towards a fake, but maybe want to change up the pace a little bit here. But they're going towards Killjoy site once again. Here we go again. Moving towards B, the B hit that I subscribe to. And this Team Penguin that aren't set up for this one just yet. They do have the KJ there. They don't have anyone else. This could be a little bit of a risky one for them. Fast B hit gonna come out straight away. KJ gonna use those mollies, trying to get the spray, but flow is all over it. Cracking Joy gonna pick up one. Yonko is down for V4, but site is taken. Plant will be secured. How is this retake gonna look? Members up in heaven. These fights when this smoke drops are so important. Flow taken out by Penguin, and that's gonna mark the re hit as everyone gets onto site. Blind goes down, close angle, so Penguin takes another Soki, picks up one more, and now Prince Charming, the last alive. Can they do it all? Get one kill with the Molly. They're buying some time, but they're walled off. They've got to make sure they break that. They're trying to. They have the lockdown, but it's not going to be enough time. Sharing the is on the defuse. They just have to stick this one for the win, but save him. Keep him safe. He's oh. going to be able to get the kill, but it's too late. Penguin had the defuse. Oh, I thought that almost went so wrong for Team Penguin. <laughs> And you see a world there where they peek it just in time to get that kill. And I feel like this was great. The sneak up towards the site to explode out before those Sage Slows can come through and stop you. Perfectly played. But that post plant from Team Penguin, the retake was just so efficient, so effective. And now once again, they have another opportunity to win this game. And they're going towards the weak side of Team Shah. Oh, oh, over peaking. Oh gets shot. Not going to go down, though. Going to re peak. Ooh, gets himself to safety. Have they done enough? No mid play this time round. Here we go. Has to find something, Shah. This same lurk we've seen before. But Vrin Charming spotted by Bangers. And that's going to lead them into the B hit as Bangers gets two. Oh no, but one's going to be back. Surely, surely Shark can get to pick up. Penguin caught out by Yonku. Yonku gets two! No way, Sharing Lee. Going to be able to find one kill. Back into two versus three with Flo, making it 2v2. Sharing Lee getting the plant down. Little man going to make it happen to Shark on the flank. Makes a 2v1 situation, but Sharing Lee has made it equal. 1v1, Thrush available. Is this going to be all he needs? Going to get a bit of space, but there's the jump down, but the kill, the switch! He gets the kill on the 360! Sharingly, what was that? Uh, what? No, that's that's not allowed. You should have been dead. That should, we should have been going to another overtime. What? Out of the thrash. Manages to turn around and hit the shot. That is crazy. That is peak Valorant right there, Jay. I don't even know what happened. Yo, cancel the next weekly. We're canceling the next weekly. We're bringing these two back. We're doing best of three. That's what I want to see. This was this was top tier from a weekly, right? We had a yeah. close game, good executes, good team play, crazy rounds. You know, those last two rounds were literally <laughs> one bullet from either team winning, right? Both of those rounds to win it out. Team Penguin clutched up, but I won't lie to you. There were some aspects of a little bit of luck, man. Man was facing yeah. the corner, having to do 360s <laughs> and stuff to get that kill. Like, <laughs> come on, man. Like, what is this? This is the Goose House. This is the Valorant Weekly. This is exactly why you tune in. I'm saying maybe we run it back and get a best of three. But maybe the we don't. <laughs> you have to tune in next week to find out. Yeah, maybe it will be. Maybe <laughs> production saying no. You know what? They say best of three. Why not run it best of five? These teams deserve that. I mean, <laughs> what was that? Like a pentuple? Pen was that a pentuple overtime in this one? Like that was just crazy to see. And and like you say, so many of these rounds, 
a single bullet, a single pixel makes the difference between one of these teams winning it. And at the end of the day, it's the comeback. Team Penguin, they were 11-6 at one point. But in, I think it was, was it the fourth or the fifth overtime, are able to yeah. finally eke it out. It's, damn. It's, it's, Disney would write stories on this. You know what I mean? Like this, <laughs> this is... This is how it goes, right? They were it's, down. It's, they were it's out. literally. I thought it was over. The, I was the music like, video. It came out today. One more. One more round is all these people needed. One more, and they made it that's happen. That's all it is. Yeah, one more dance. Penguin. They flipping made it. You know, like they they did it. They were ice cold. I'm trying to think of some more <laughs> pun snow. Throw snow. Throw one in there. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm I'm supposed to be the cold boy, but I'm I'm kind of icy out here. I'm not feeling it. I'm a bit chilly, you know. Oh, I like that. Either way, it is going to be Team <laughs> Penguin that are the emperors of this week's weekly. Always to be found on a Monday. A Valorant action. We can catch more of that next Monday. Make sure you tune in because these games are absolutely crazy. Quick shout out to you guys in chat for obviously tuning in. Quick shout out to all the players that participated. And obviously a massive shout out to Emmy Loon, Jay and Tex, our production team. Without them, there would be no me and Snow. There would be no teams. There would be no stream for you guys. So make sure you show them a lot of love in the chat and in the Discord. So with that being said, we are going to peace out. Goodbye. We'll see you next week for some more Valorant action.
Stop the safe.